This episode of Hobie is sponsored by Ho Jeff. Save 25% with promo code HobiePod. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun. And remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the history of bad ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 534. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. Like, I'm uh, Jim. Brian. <laughs> I'm Brian. I'm Jim. Sorry. That's Jim. And <laughs> with us is film critic to the stars, uh, sn- Oscar snubbed last week, uh, expert, Scab Jeff. Welcome, Scab Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we wanted you on the show last week. I, I was I was told that uh, the person in charge of scheduling didn't have me come in because I made fun of Rocky last time I was on. That would be Brian. <laughs> I am not in charge of scheduling. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not. <laughs> I'm just saying that's what I was told. And I'll make fun of Rocky all day long. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just a volunteer. I am not on staff here. I'm not on staff here. Who's on staff here? Oh, I think we found the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's at your house. You have to be some no, sort not. of... No, ownership not. presence. So, right. so guests in the past have just shown up. Yes. You know, oh, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. guess we're having in this week. If Scab, you you have an open invitation whenever you want to come. So I don't care <laughs> if you know where Jason lives. Just show up on nah, Tuesday. Let's not do that much. Not not even just guests, like hosts. Like I mean, Brian became a, a regular just by showing up. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. That is true. They oh. always say they're blown away by my ability to show up. I feel, well, I, this, Brian I feel the studio is running out of room, though. Well, if we had 10 more inches on that side, I think it would have helped. Damn it. Damn my wife. I still think the, the play is flipping your green room with your studio. I think that's a good call. I think it's a good call. Shove the kids in the, in the yeah, studio. Yeah, but this is a lot easier to clean than the other room. That's why you have kids. That's true. That is true. They do do a good job. They need to earn the snacks that they, they steal do. from they us. They clean. Uh, Brian, you got a gift. I uh, did. Uh, I walked into um, a new set of Mad Libs. <gasps> they are Clue. <gasps> Even better. Mad Libs. Those are from Doug, number from, one fan. From Doug. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. So he also, what else did he bring us over there? Uh, Doug also brought us uh, some Clawson pickle flavored jelly beans. So thanks, Doug. Let me see what those are. Let They're jelly those. beans. They're flavored like pickles. Well, they're solid green, which is nice. I think you can color them whatever you want. <laughs> I think they're going to taste good. They're going to taste like sweet pickles. I think taste so. like cloths and pickles. They might not even be sweet. Maybe. I'm excited about this, Bro, Jeff. Are you scab? Are you excited about these? I am not, not in the slightest bit, and I didn't have dinner yet. So, oh well, we got worse. a lot of food. <laughs> uh, Cursey on my youngest son. We do have dirt cake flavored creamed Oreos. I'm very excited. He found them. Uh, my youngest son is a pretty good uh, uh, fr- friend of the podcast. Uh, he gets a lot. He finds a lot of these things. I was also sent with two bribes from Dr. Dana. Oh, Ooh. what do we got? Uh, we got? She got us the new chocolatey chip pancake uh, Pop-Tarts. Ooh. As well as some party cake flavored peeps. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's about what I said when she was like, hey, I got you something for the podcast. I got your peeps. That's Love Great. you, Brian. Honey, Thank those you. Pop-Tarts look peeps. like they have ants on the cover. Like, that's a bad marketing, doesn't it? They're called chocolate chips. Yeah, but they look like ants. So it looks like no. chocolate chips on top of a pancake. They do not look like ants. Oh, well, I think so. Well, that's you're it. wrong. Sorry. I've heard. Uh, Blake, how you doing down there? Great. Awesome. Awesome. Ooh, got to update the, sc- the score. Your batting average. So, uh... Jeff, how was the Oscar party? You have an Oscar party every year. Uh, I feel it was pretty good. Okay. He's only saying that because he won. I saw that. Did you? Uh, I you, did. He won because he rolled a higher die. Yep. <laughs> Who did you tie with? With uh, Jim. And we yeah. had awesome scores. I think what what we, we missed five. Twenty. We picked. We only missed four. We missed four out of twenty six or yes. twenty five. Wow. Uh, I, and I should have gotten one that you did get, and you should have gotten one that I did get. Yeah. So what percentile is that? I think we would have gotten a B on if it were a B minus. B minus. B B minus. <laughs> uh, Jim, I actually had a space saved over there for you for the other trophy. I was hoping to bring it. I, I it have was a, close. I was making room over there. This um, is the third straight year I have got the most correct. And not win? No, I tied the last two years and oh. did not win. Are you Donald Trump? Down the hall. Oh, my bad. My bad. Fuck, I have both of those you. trophies. <laughs> no, I'm just asking. Like the election. Oh, no, I only have one. You have the other one, don't you? No, you have both. You uh, won I tied two. Yeah. So you said three. You said the third straight year. No, oh, yeah, the, yeah. I have oh, the trophy there from oh, that's three years ago. <laughs> you did win one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he flat out won one. Then we had a four way tie last year. Yeah, I, I saw Jim's exuberant celebration <laughs> for uh, Jeff's trophy presentation. <laughs> it was quite year. enthusiastic <laughs> clapping. <was> so great. <laughs> I mean, he just shamed everybody. We we had a we had a uh, a misstep with the first attempt at filming that so that was actually the second <laughs> oh, second was, so Jim was actually reenacting his enthusiastic clapping ah <laughs> uh, well next year there's always next year well Jim always wins so I just have to I hope, uh, so. hope he, that I tie him <laughs> we have a spot for you we have a spot for another trophy over there another Oscar trophy yeah yeah it's over there uh the giant rabbit with big teeth guards it so uh yeah uh, sharp pointy teeth. Sharp pointy teeth. Big teeth. Big teeth. So sharp pointy teeth. <laughs> uh, anybody got anything going on? Anybody you want to talk about? Oh, I watched a few things this week. Go right ahead. I watched the new John Cena film. Which one is that? Ricky Stanicki. Ricky Stanicki. <gasps> How was that? I want to see that. It it was a bad film, but it was amusing. <laughs> Good. So okay. apparently, I read they've been trying to get that movie made for like ten years. <laughs> what? And it took this long. For someone to do it. Jesus. Like him and uh, Efron have been trying to get that film done. Maybe not 10 years, but mm-hmm. for a substantial period of time to where a film like that, they should, it should have been already done and like, yeah. over with and out of everyone's mind. Yeah. Like, there's, like, it's not good enough for them to, you know what I mean? To, to keep holding on to it. Right. What's it about, briefly? It's about three guys who, or as kids, uh, they created a fake person who they blamed everything on, and that went to like, and they used him as a scapegoat, for, like in their adult lives. Like, oh, I'm going to go. Uh, like, it started. They they're going to skip the baby, sh- the, the couple's baby shower, so they can go to uh, Atlantic City. <laughs> to be fair, everybody should skip yeah. couples' baby showers. They were using it as like a, a get out of jail free card, so yeah. that they didn't have to do stuff with their families and their <laughs> wives. Right? Yeah, that's why I do this podcast. I watch that. Then I also watched an Apple uh, show, uh, Lessons in Chemistry. Ooh. How was that with Brie Larson? It was really good. It's eight okay. episodes. I watched it in two nights. Okay. So I believe Dr. Dana just finished that as well. It is it is really good. What's that about? Uh, she's a chemist mm-hmm. or a lab tech because she's female in the 50s, mm-hmm. and she did not get her PhD, and uh, she ends up losing her job and having to uh, survive, and she could like... Gets on a cooking show and doing chemistry is cooking and oh, but it's uh, is it based on a true story? It's based on a uh, book, I believe. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Uh, Worked on the proper ratio of virgin olive oil to garlic thinly sliced. Half a cup to a third. That's right. Yeah. Um, did you guys watch uh, Traders season finale? I did finish Traders. Did you? I have not. We won't spoil it. Well, I don't care if you spoil it. Um, it was it's uh it was a good twist. So I like it. I th- I still think last uh, season was a better tw- uh, ending, but um, when it was the last people left. Uh, I was like, oh, my God, don't end the game. Do it again. Do it mm-hmm. again. And all my kids and my wife even said, oh, my God, that would be amazing. And so all my kids were chanting, do it, do it. And when they did, it was and like. And they did it. Yep. Uh, the best is her reaction. She's still pissed. Yes. We watched the after show. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, my God. And I like John. It's just a game. <laughs> like, figure it's okay. All those people have money. Yeah. Yeah, so, especially her. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was very well. Done. I I really enjoyed it, especially with that little twist at the end. So I'm going under the assumption they got the traitor at the end. Mm-hmm. They got Kate. So, they got Kate. They voted her out, and there was three left with uh, CTMJ and Trishel. And they said, "You want to end?" And uh, they they grabbed their little flame packet things, and they do want to end it and. Uh, because they're all faithful at the end. Those three yeah. are all faithful. And MJ threw hers in. It came up green, so to end it, and both Trishel and CT. <laughs> now, Trishel's comment was she didn't know if she trusted CT. Yeah, so then they did another vote. CT voted for MJ. MJ voted for Trishel, and Trishel voted for CT. <laughs> so it was a three-way? So they yeah. had to re-vote. <laughs> and then and C- MJ didn't change her vote. And CT did. Uh, CT basically gave his speech like, "You're the only one I trust. Like, I'm not. I'm not a traitor. This is it." And so Trichelle changed her vote to MJ. <laughs> and so, but MJ's face the whole time was just shocked. Like she was just and just surprised and just, and then angry after. And she's like, "You guys are just greedy." It's like, well, instead of splitting two hundred and eight thousand dollars three ways, you now split it twice. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, well. And, and CT's like, the only one I trust in this whole group is Trishel. So it was down to those three. So they got rid of three before that? Uh, it was the four of them total at the end well, that went they, to the bonfire. Because they... Oh, yeah. Well, they killed... Uh, uh, who did they kill? I forget. Um, Sandra? Uh, or they the ban- other housewife? They banished... Uh, Sheree got killed, and yeah. then they banished... Uh, Sandra. Yeah, and then they did another round. Round. Oh, okay. So, and then they got at the bonfire. They got rid of Kate, and then they decided to ah fuck it. We're going to kick MJ out. <laughs> so it was awesome. My kids were excited. So the people from the challenge won. Yeah. So the gamers won. Yeah, the gamers won. <laughs> but yeah, MJ is still pissed off in the after show. John, the politician's like, it's a game. Get over it. <laughs> Like, that's part of the game. So, it was good, though. I liked it. So, anybody else watch anything? I watched Aquaman. The new one? The new one. And? It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mean Aquaman 2? Aquaman 2. Electric Aquaman Google. and the Lost Kingdom. You voted that for a floppy. I did. <laughs> Do you still no. feel it's justified? Oh, no. My vote was totally not justified. It was, <laughs> like... I'm watching it, and I'm like, why does the humor in this remind me of Looney Tunes? <laughs> <laughs> Did they act me? I mean, it, it, it felt like, you know, it was Aquaman and uh, his whatever, brother, his right? brother, yeah, Sea Ocean donkey. Master. Ocean yeah, Master. Sea Donkey. Sea Donkey, yeah, whatever his name was. That's the, that's the seahorse's name, Sea Donkey. <laughs> and, uh, like, they're just going back and forth, and it's like, this just sounds like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck going back and forth. Was it weird when one of them was like, it's duck season, no rabbit season? It, it like was that? very weird. It fell out of place. Oh, okay. Uh, I heard he knocked down a tree to cross a bridge area. Nope. Oh. He knocked down a statue. Oh. Which is funny, because in it, like, Aquaman jumps pretty far. Like, he's a pretty super-powered human, right? It well, was it was a really big chasm. chasm. Oh, okay. Take a look at that chasm down here. Was that chasm so that is huge. <laughs> huge. Do you feel like James Gunn is going to keep this into the DC? No. Okay. That's a shame. That's a shame. Supposedly, Jason Momoa is being Lobo. He's playing Lobo. Yep, I heard that. Uh, which, sure, why not? I think he's a 
probably fits the traditional Lobo more than he fit the traditional Aquaman. So Peacemaker Season 2 uh, will be part of James Gunn's new DC universe, but Season 1 is not. That makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and people online are like, is it just because of that uh, Justice League cameo at the end? Yeah, is that why? So, which you could have just said it's a multiverse, right? <laughs> they came in, but yeah, he said season two will be connected, but not be, season one, just because of the Flash and Aquaman cameo at the end. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, you know what? I really don't feel like there's anything that could go wrong with this new universe. I feel like they got it all set perfectly fine. I feel like there's going to be no issues. Blue Beetle's in the new universe, but his film doesn't count. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, but with, or it could count. We don't know yet. We don't know. But he said he's in it. <laughs> like, this is a horrible idea. Uh, but good for them. Good for DC. So you would not recommend it? I, I couldn't. I Who's mean, the villain in it? Black Manta, right? Yeah. Black Manta, yeah. I think you should watch it, Jason. We are. We're going to watch it with the kids. Uh, how was Black Manta? Was he better than the first one? Eh. <laughs> he was. I mean, he, yeah, was he shouldn't guy. have been the bad guy in the first one, and he should have been this one. But I mean, the, no. it was this got a little ridiculous, and the whole. <laughs> he, and James Wan directed this too, and he's a pretty decent director. It was. He, it, was some, it was fake. <laughs> Very fake. <laughs> um. Okay. Anything else you watch? The Oscars. We'll get to that in a bit. Jeff, besides the Oscars, did you watch anything? Well, the, that conversation. So, like, what other TV shows are not part of, like, the DC or the Marvel universe that, that could have been that may make it better if you make it a multiverse, like the old Incredible Hulk with Lou Ferrigno? <laughs> <laughs> or or the the greatest, Great American Hero? Was he? Great American Hero would be fine. Yeah, I don't think he's related. He's not a DC or a Marvel character. <laughs> but but he was could good. be, right? Uh, DC doesn't really have much that's in yeah. it. Uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is now part of the MCU. They did like, say that. Well, is Arrow officially? No. Well, it was part of the well, old multiverse. Yeah. Yeah, DC's DC. not really doing the multiverse. Now, Marvel's doing the multiverse now. So yes. pretty much every Marvel property in the past probably exists somewhere within the multiverse. Is yes. Lou Ferrigno still alive? Uh, last yes. I heard he was, yes. Bill Bixby isn't. Is Lou Ferrigno still living next door to Kevin James? I believe so. Okay. Really? Yeah. Oh. Okay. In Queens? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just checking. Um, yeah. So to make your to answer your question, Jeff, nothing really is going to make DC but that much better. I, I don't know. I, I'm hoping James Gunn fixes it. Sure. Why not? I don't know. I just like the whole Peacemaker thing. Season one doesn't count. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> season two is a continuation of season one. Yeah, because I know like, the Arrowverse was pretty much tying anything they could together. Yeah. But that doesn't have anything to do with this current. Except Black Lightning. <laughs> they had Black Lightning in there. But, I mean, they went. They tied have. Smallville into it. And... I did three seasons of reviews for nerdly.co.uk. For you that. did three whole seasons? Yeah. They made three seasons? Yeah. Yep. It was rough. Uh, the, the special effects were so bad. Yeah. I don't know. It could be worse. It could have been Riverdale. Yeah, that was a good show. I know it wasn't. Uh, Is that Marvel? Yes. <laughs> we're going well, I, I don't know who what owns, the Archie comics Who were. owns Archie comics? I don't think they're owned by uh, any. Uh, I think it's just Archie comics. Is, <laughs> I think they're in the Spawn universe. That could be. Or Bazooka Joe universe. <laughs> <laughs> Spawn. Bazooka Joe is a multiverse of the Archie comics. <laughs> Can you imagine Spawn showing up at Riverdale? <laughs> Who's the bully in Riverdale in Archie? Is there a bully? I don't know. In Riverdale, in the comics, I guess Reggie was the bully. I just like to see Spawn deal with Reggie. <laughs> Did you just take his insides out? <laughs> Mr. Weatherby. <laughs> well, that lasted all of eight seconds. <laughs> now what do we do? Mr. Weatherby is a pedophile. <laughs> he just killed him. <laughs> um, you know, the first issue of Spawn is always funny because they built this villain up. Uh, like to be like their version of Joker to Spawn, and then at the end of the arc, he kills him. Spawn kills him, mm -hmm. and they're like, 
but all the fans were like, but he would be a good villain. And he's like, but why would he keep him around? Yeah. <laughs> he's not going to bring it. Like, Spawn, in theory, would not keep this guy around. No, he's a bad person. He's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just going to kill him. And they're like, oh, but Batman doesn't do that. Spawn is not Batman. <laughs> and there's an issue in Gotham City with their crime. <laughs> like, let's be real here. Oh, um, uh, what did I just see? The Arkham Asylum was uh, 100% capacity. So they just decided yeah. to kill. I saw the skit. I can't even, I'm not sure what it was from, but I saw it online where uh, there were some like teenage girls sitting around watching or trying to figure out who Batman is. And they logic it together. They're like, wait a minute. So he's got to got to be very rich to do all this. And they're like, do you think it, do you think it could be Bruce Wayne? Oh, I think. And then they're like, oh, we got to get the new. And mom walks in and goes, oh, what are you girls talking about? I'm like, we think Bruce Wayne might be Batman. She's like, um, don't, don't say anything. And then doorbell rings and it's commissioner gordon who brings at non-disclosure forms for all the girls to sign <laughs> and they're like what what and it's like oh come on you you know everyone knows it the fact you guys are 16 and just figured it out you're a little slow but <laughs> we but we want we don't want uh, bruce wayne to know that we know because then he might stop <laughs> so it's like a bowling whistleblower <laughs> Too soon. Right. Sad day for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Is did that make news of the geek? News of the geek? No, no, no. 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 Oh, okay. No. Well, if anybody doesn't know, the uh, Boeing whistleblower uh, committed suicide. Quote unquote. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> it's very. He was just giving a deposition about Boeing and unsafe issues. It's fine. It's amazing. They were very unsafe. The rate of suicide amongst the whistleblowers is sky high. It's a lot of stress, Jeff. Jim, it's a lot of stress. Don't call me Jeff. Sorry. Hey, George, it's a lot of stress. Um, Okay, Chris. Okay, it's fine. Uh, Jeff, did you watch anything besides Uh, Oscars? I watched a lot of Oscar movies. I, I did start watching Foxcatcher again today. Has anybody seen the I have Carell? seen that. It is it is one of the scariest horror movies that you'll ever see with Steve Carell as the... <laughs> as the wrestling coach? Yeah, that was, the, yeah uh, Carell and uh, Channing Tatum. Yeah, <laughs> Channing Tatum is Tates, the... Tates, isn't it? Wow. It yeah. is very disturbing. It's... I, I did not remember how disturbing it was, so I was watching it again, and I'm like, oh, my God. And Steve Carell was making, my, my name's this, but you can call me Golden Eagle if you want. And, and usually that would be a funny thing coming from Steve Carell, and it's like, oh, no. <laughs> this guy is unhinged, and he's very rich and unhinged. <laughs> yeah, very unsettling and uncomfortable film. It's, it is. And I, is it the Vanderbilt or the Biltmore? I can't. Uh, DuPont. 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 Mm-hmm. Sorry. You were close. Yeah. Samsonite. Archie Comics is uh, by Archie Comics Publications. So, there you go. Samsonite was way off. So, um, okay. Anything else? Um, probably, but... Okay. That's how it But when you're put on the spot, you forget. <laughs> exactly. Blake, you see anything? What'd you see? Uh, Shogun, the new one that's on Hulu. How, how is that? that? I like it a lot. A lot, right? I, I so like it a lot. I remember this is like forty years before the original Shogun with Richard Chamberlain and shit. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching that as a kid when it was a big TV miniseries event. You know when that stuff was like. Is uh, this connected to it? No, it's a okay. complete remake. Oh, it's a remake, but it's based okay. on the same character. Was a James Caravel? I forget his name. Author book of Shogun. Okay, but um, I remember watching it the first time forty some years ago. And being too young to understand the politics and the strategy and all that kind of behind it, but I was still blown away because, you know, anything Japanese at that time was pretty fucking cool. You mm-hmm. know, samurais, ninjas, and shit. But now being an adult and watching the remake, it kind of gives me, I was like, man, I want to go back and watch the original TV miniseries event, which was so huge back in the day. I probably would advise you not to do that. Well, I, it was still pretty good, if I, if I remember correctly. He but just it, wants to see Richard Chamberlain without a shirt on. Who yeah. doesn't? I want to see him get pissed on. You know, that's basically. They reenacted that, <laughs> obviously. But I remember being a kid, be like, why is he peeing on him? I don't understand that shit. Jellyfish. Yeah, exactly. You know, but uh, it was pretty good. And he, it, it's a lot more in depth than what I remember. So it was pretty good. Is I have it, it in on. English or Japanese? It is both. 
Yes, you you well. If you want the was the original the authentic, all in English? I can't remember. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was so good, I can't remember. <laughs> no, uh, this one. If you want the authentic, it's in the English and Japanese, but you have to read Japanese. But you can go for the full dub. Uh, option so he speaks Hulu. English and then a thick Japanese accent <laughs> for the Japanese parts. I did not listen to the Japanese uh, <laughs> dub version, but there's a full English version where they'll dub the English over the Japanese in basically any of the major languages if you want. You can choose it if you like. We should just watch it in Spanish. Or you can just watch <laughs> it in subtitles. Spanish. Exactly. <laughs> Greek. It actually fit one of the main characters. In watch it in Spanish with Greek subtitles. I like yeah. it. I love it. Well, remember yeah. the movie Life is Beautiful, which is about yes. him. Uh, uh, La vida bella. Heard, but yeah. he, he speaks some language and then the Germans speak German, but a lot of it is he's the only one who speaks it, but he pretends to make things up. So if you watch that dubbed, mm-hmm. it makes no sense at all <laughs> because he's saying that and they don't understand. And then he's saying the same thing back. And I'm like, what's going on? And then I realized that it was actually the dubbed version that I was watching. <laughs> well, uh, I got Shogun on DVR that I have to start. Yeah. I'm interested in it. You should. Add, uh, fourth episode is coming out tonight. Gotcha. That was good. But uh, I finally got to watch Last Night in Soho, which is pretty cool. Okay. That's the uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, mm-hmm. Edgar Wright. Uh, it came out a couple that. years ago. It's, it, it, it's entertaining. It is entertaining. I, I liked it a lot. I, for, first of all, I like Edgar Wright to begin with and his yeah. director and stuff. So it is kind of interesting to read some of the background for this movie mm-hmm. and how um, there's a lot of homages to you know prior characters. Like he likes putting a lot of former James Bond characters uh, into his movies, mm-hmm. and this one had uh, you know two former Bond girls, and Pussy Bond galore. guys. No, no pussy galore. Uh, but the the gold chick in the beginning that dies, oh, Goldfinger. Um, gold, yeah, she's uh, Thomas and McGregor. I forget what's her name. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main character's mother is she? Gold grandmother. In it? I'm sorry. Is yeah. she gold in it? No. Oh, damn it. You know, It'd be but, funny if he just starts ripping off the Bond character. Thomas and McKenzie, is it? Or? Yeah, Thomas and McKenzie. Yes, yeah, she was in uh, Jojo. Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, Jojo mm-hmm. Rabbit as well. A couple of stuff. Mm-hmm. Jewish girl. Who's yeah. she in Jojo Rabbit? The Jewish girl on the wall? It's Jewish girl, yeah. She wasn't in Gold Member or Goldfinger? Her, her grandmother was. No, her oh, grandmother was. I thought that's when you said that you were asking. <laughs> she <laughs> she <laughs> aged <laughs> real well over the last <laughs> yeah. 70 years. Yeah. <laughs> she was yeah. awesome <laughs> for being 100. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Found she a youth action soul. there, man. <laughs> But no, it's pretty good. There's a lot of uh, good things where where uh, Thomason's doing the, uh, what is it? What is it? The, kind of like the psychiatric, psychological reenactment connection, mm-hmm. deep emotional connection with Anya Taylor Joy's character, and uh, there's some really neat. Um, I I guess you know you would appreciate it being a movie buff, Jeff, if you saw the movie where they're doing, where she's coming in, where she's her she's in her modern day, but she's fading back into the 60s with Arnie Taylor Joy's character, and they step in and step out. So they got a lot of great cinematography and in, in montages in between the two as she's re-experiencing the emotional uh, and uh, actual life and pain of Arnie Taylor Joy's character. And it has... You know, she's a little psych... psych, psych, psych I don't want to say psychotic. She's a little uh, psychic, I guess is the best better. Because she can... Sense her mother, and she sees her mother's in reflection and stuff. And so when she goes to London, oh, you yeah, be careful, you know, et cetera. But, so that was pretty good. And the other one, Death and Other Details, the, the Hulu one, I finished that with Inigo Montoya as a detective. Oh. You know, halfway through, you figured it out. And was it the Six Finger Man? Yes. Oh. And, he, and he's looking for the Six Finger uh, Billionaire, which is oh. actually, spoiler alert, the main character's mother, which everybody spoiled halfway through because she's in the credits as being in the final episode and everything else. And... You figure it out halfway through, and they try to throw you some. I don't know what he's talking work. about. I've never it, seen it's this. Good. Well, it's good because it, it, it's colorful, it's kitschy, it's easy. Is it a movie or a TV show? TV series. Okay. It's like ten episodes. Okay. It's easy. Never to get even through. heard of this. Yeah, it's easy to get through. Okay. But yeah, Is there a pit of first, despair. What's that? Is there a pit of despair? No, unfortunately not. It would have been uh, better if it did have it. Damn it! So rodents of unusual size. No, no rodents of unusual right? size. No, no R O U S's. They're not, no, real. They're not no, real. no, they're not real. They're not real. But it was, it was okay and colorful. I mean, if you like a lot of color cinematography, it's okay. But you figure out halfway through, but the story, well, you just other told than us. that, kind of sucked. <laughs> I mean, oh, I yeah. figured it out before I watched a single second of it's, it. Well, <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy watching. 
It's no heavy shit. It's no heavy lifting. Okay. But, you know. well, especially now since you know the ending. <laughs> yeah. You figure it out yourself. I didn't even need me to tell you. Damn it. Uh, Brian, anything? Uh, yeah. I watched the uh, latest episode of The Dynasty, uh, the Patriots oh. thing. Uh, this episode was on uh, Deflate Gate. Mm. So, uh, again. Brady, I need your phone. No. <laughs> no, no, I need it. No. Do you have a warrant? No. no. <laughs> then you're not getting my phone? I, I would like to have your phone. No. If you don't give me your phone, you're suspended for four games. Okay. <laughs> but I uh, want your phone. <laughs> but there was uh, a that, that episode had a lot of the uh, like behind the scenes stuff that happened with him and Jimmy G, mm-hmm. like locker room stuff, and so Did they get along. Um, not really. Okay, but like there's like one clip where they're like uh, Tom Brady, Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, oh, the, well, not everybody yeah. knows it. Just trying to be nice. Um, where they're interviewing, have they met um, Giselle <laughs> with little G? Oh, yes, no. yes, that one. Uh, where they're interviewing uh, Garoppolo at his locker, uh, as he is, he had been named the starter, obviously because Brady was suspended. And they're like, "What's uh, like, what's one great piece of advice that Tom has ever given you?" And he's like, oh, "That's that's a that's a good one. Uh, I'll have to get back to you on that one." <laughs> <laughs> like he like had don't nothing. marry a supermodel. <laughs> he had nothing. Like yeah. So that there was just like n- no communication like the, he just wasn't you know <laughs> that's, but, a, that's a fantastic leader right there uh jimmy G. <laughs> to be fair he was away from the team like he wasn't there correct because he was rehabbing from injury yeah and, and that so it was like but garoppolo wasn't a rookie though was he he was not yeah so he'd been on the team for longer than that yeah this it, was that and, and the starting and the starting quarterback didn't teach him anything yeah. I, I, I mean, that's worse than Aaron Rodgers. Hey, it is. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers at least told uh, everybody, fuck off. <laughs> I mean, he, soon to be uh, the next vice president. What? I don't know if you saw that or not. What happened? Uh, Aaron Rodgers is uh, RFK Jr.'s uh, pick to be vice president. Uh, it's either <sighs> him or uh, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> I like Jesse. Those are his picks for uh, wow. his vice president <sighs> ticket. That's a bold call, Cotton. Let's yeah, see how it plays out. Uh, no, so, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and Jesse Ventura. Would Aaron Rodgers have to retire from football? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you're allowed to continue to play football and be vice well, president. Most people in this day and age uh, have two jobs. So it's, I mean, it's the, fine. the vice president this, really doesn't economy, do anything else. <laughs> you guys kidding me? In this economy, he needs both jobs. <laughs> Fifty million a year isn't good enough in this climate. Do we have a vice president now? We do. We have one. Oh. Yes. Okay. Do uh, <laughs> I don't know where no, no, she she uh, did her her job. She sat behind the Joe Biden when he gave the uh, oh, State okay. of the Union. Stand and clap when she's supposed to. <laughs> I mean, that's she's around every four that's, years. That's, yeah. Every year he gives the State oh, of the Union. Right, every right, year sorry. she's got one day a year yes. she has to show up. <laughs> Is Biden going to try and have her killed by a? Okay, moving by on. Also, uh, moving on. <laughs> Uh, we got these um, cloths and pickle. Oh, sorry, Brian. You got more shows, please. Yeah. Uh, no, was, so the, the secret is Tom didn't want to give up his phone because he had the nudie pics of Giselle on it, right? I, I mean, they don't talk that's about what, that that's in what, this documentary. That, that's what the commissioner actually wanted to see. I, I mean, it, that wouldn't surprise <laughs> me. I don't want to get naked pictures of Giselle. I know. That's right. He deflated his balls. <laughs> Let's make up a scandal with Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, Roger, you're kind of a creepy old man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you meet my friend Vince? <laughs> He's right here. <laughs> it was all Vince's idea. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking uh, of balls, hey, Brock Lesnar comes in. Am I peeing around here? <laughs> Speaking of balls, I just got the Righteous Gemstones season three where BJ goes to beat up the guy that was having the quote unquote non sexual affair with his wife. Okay. And the fight scene is pretty goddamn hilarious and shocking. But I don't want to give it all away. I'll just say balls. There There's go. a lot of balls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, <laughs> you got any shows you're watching with balls in it? I well, I mean, the <laughs> deflating. They, they were deflated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but in that w- episode too, they talk about when uh, Kraft goes to Russia. Mm-hmm. Um, and Putin steals <laughs> his, his ring. His ring. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I forgot about that. It was, that was like it, it the was so funny just because he was like, you know, we walk in the room, very little guy, but very imposing, you know, and he's got all these people with him and he's like, somebody asked me to show him the ring and he's like, I pulled it out of my pocket and he was just like, thanks. And just <laughs> <laughs> It came like obviously gigantic national yes. like, thing. And, Did he ever get it back? Uh, you know, he didn't say. <laughs> so I'm going to say no. So, so probably not. So probably not. <laughs> yeah, Putin had to hawk it to pay for the war in Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> After all the U.S. sanctions. <laughs> yeah, it was the best he could get was $5,000 from uh, uh, Paul at the, or whatever at the Vegas uh, pawn the, the, shop. The, the prime minister of India bought it, I think. <laughs> And if I learn anything from watching Icarus, if Putin takes your ring, you don't ask for it back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. Robert's yeah. like, hey, can... No, no. Don't yeah. do that. Like, he was like, you know, like, we're, we're doing this thing, and then he, like, just turns, and, like, all of him and all of his people walk out of the room, and he's like, I'm just kind of standing there, like, he just took my Super Bowl ring. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, nobody was there. Everyone was just kind of like, all right. You know, like, at the next... That uh, sucks. The next government meeting, Putin's like, did you guys see that I won a Super Bowl? <laughs> I got a Super Bowl here. <laughs> did you watch the latest Super Bowl? I was the quarterback. <laughs> here it is. Uh, I Putin even knows I, what a Super Bowl is. I was MVP. <laughs> Anyone doubt that? No, I sir. No, sir. No, sir. Most valuable premier. Why is he German? Oh, the, the, the <laughs> premier <laughs> of... <laughs> He's a dictator, right? That's how <laughs> dictators speak, right? Yeah. Well, the premier of North uh, <laughs> North Korea, he scored an 18 on 18 holes, didn't he? Yes, yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> Kim Il-sung's dad... <laughs> He, that's Which why he is quit, more that's why he quit golf because he got a hole in one in every hole. It's like, it's too, easy. Like, it's too easy. <laughs> he also got a uh, three hundred in his first bowling game. But he doesn't have a Super Bowl ring. He does not. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, like, hold on. He may now. <laughs> <laughs> he might have bought it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Chumley talked him down to half price. <laughs> uh, I'm just imagining a, a meeting between Putin and Kim Jong. <laughs> Whoever is in charge now, and he's like, I got an 18 and an 18 hole round of golf. I have a Super Bowl ring. <laughs> like, What's the Super Bowl? <laughs> Chumley's like, Putin comes in, right? Hey, Jim, you can be Chumley. I, 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 I'm Putin. I got this uh, Super Bowl ring. I need, uh, it's, it's authentic. Uh, I don't know. Um, I need 500 million. Uh, let me take a look at that. Um, I might have to bring an expert in to uh, okay. take a okay. look at this. As long as it's not Robert Kraft. <laughs> um, I want it, you know. Yeah, I, 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 the best I can do is five hundred dollars. Could it, you it, do it, six hundred? I have a sick grandmother. Uh, five twenty-five is the highest. I'm I can invading go. Ukraine. Can you do five fifty? <laughs> that five twenty-five is the best I can go. Oh, that's fine. I guess I'll just tear mine. I've got some swords I could throw in. <laughs> I got some political prisoners in the background. What, what are you going to give me for them? Pawn shops always have swords. They do always, and, and, uh, and guns, and guns. Just saying. And PlayStations. Yeah. So That's like all they sold on Hardcore Pond, wasn't it? Guns. Video games and oh. guns. And, and sad wedding that rings. That was the one in Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that was so bad. The Gold oh, Family. Terrible. If I learned anything from the movie The Crow, is that's where every criminal right. goes with their uh, jewelry. Right. Um, okay. Good job, Brian. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Chumney, you forgot the part where he said, I, this is hot. I ain't buying it. <laughs> All right, I mean, I read about this in the newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> you stole this. This was a no. worldwide story yeah. of the theft of this. That ring. was a different ring. This, that's a different one. This that's is different. the one I won. <laughs> yeah. Did I you not watch the Super Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. I was on the Patriots. <laughs> I am the Patriot. <laughs> Did you not watch it? I was there. I set the record in passing touchdowns to myself. <laughs> I threw 500 meters of passing. <laughs> Sir, do you know what that is? Uh, I'd have had another one if they had made the laces go out. <laughs> Stupid Dan. It's the Americans' fault. Dan. Would have had another one for, one for those meddling kids. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Hyde White? <laughs> um, anything else? Yeah. Okay, what else you got? Masters uh, of the Air. Masters of the Air. Uh, Still digging it? It's so good. Okay. Like, so good. Uh, this latest episode, they introduced uh, the Tuskegee Airmen into the war and like how they're... You mm-hmm. know, it's uh, still probably one of the best shows I've watched in the last couple of years, okay. in my opinion. Good. Good. 
I, I started it. I got to half an episode and then fell asleep because yeah. it was at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Not because it was bad. It was just you were tired. Yeah. So similar to my Oppenheimer experience. Yep. Oppenheimer! Um, and then we're trying to catch up on the rookie finally. Oh, good luck. We're, uh, I think we're five episodes left of the last season. We got to get caught up. We got to finish it. We had to finish like the last four episodes of four mm. and then like... So oh, we're five. like ten and ten episodes into season five. It's it's enjoyable. I, I still like it. Yeah, I, I'm just I do like how it's uh, his girlfriend, the firefighter. Like they always have a way to find out. Like they're connected to each other. And let me tell you, mm, Jenna Dewan. He, let me tell you, um, the rookie. He's kind of like Batman. I don't think L.A. would have any crime if it wasn't if he was gone. Like I feel like he just brings all the psychos out. I'm just telling you. I mean. I, I am. So, I am. Uh, it is does kind of suck that uh, in real life the actress passed away. The one that was playing the serial killer. Yeah. yeah so we like just just watched uh, the episode in five where she dies, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was like, I was telling Erica, I was like, I wonder like if they knew like she was sick and like yeah. you know what I mean like knew or she knew, gave them a heads up like, like hey. hey like yeah because yeah. I would have liked to have seen her continue throughout the whole series. Yeah, that was that whole. But now they're doing it with the drug guy, the drug kingpin, Elijah. Uh, yeah, and her his group. Yep. So, um, okay, I'm uh still watching Clear Eyes, Full Hearts, can't lose. Yep. Uh, halfway through season two, he just got just got the job back. So, oh yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a good show. I'm yeah. Really digging it. So, uh, t- uh, Tammy just slapped his her daughter. Oh, yeah. Yep. And uh, my wife just went, oh, oh, look at that. (laughs) Uh, Well, fuck the Swede, man. Yeah, he's a piece of shit, right? He sucked. Uh, My wife is a huge fan of Tammy. Loves her. As she should be. Yeah. As Uh, everyone should be. uh, We had a poll of the week on Twitter at Bad Ideas Podcast. uh, Who's your favorite Mario Brothers video game character? Uh, I forgot to put its main character. Uh, we had Mario, Luigi, Princess Peach, and Bowser. Uh, thanks, everyone. Living in the basement. Nobody voted for Princess Peach. Nobody. Not a single vote for Peach. 23% with Bowser. And winning 46% to 31%. Mario over Luigi. No, that's a big surprise, but I like Luigi. I voted for Toad. Oh, I, I would have voted for Toad, but he wasn't on the poll, so I voted for Luigi. Super Mario Brothers 2 is coming out, the movie, uh, coming out in 2026. Oh, I'm about to say Super Mario Brothers 2 was out in, like, 1989. Ugh, that movie. With that game, I mean, ugh. that was a good game. I didn't like that one. There you go. So, okay. um, go ahead. Um, we now have the dill pickle uh, jelly beans out for us mm-hmm. to try. We're passing around the table now. Let's see who, uh, see how good they are. You want to do the honors, Jason? Do the eat the first one? Yeah, I'll, they smell pickles. They smell like pickles. When I opened up the bag, they did definitely smell like pickles. <laughs> So, Jason, try they, Oh, yeah, they definitely taste like pickles. Uh, it's a, mm. Oh, that clean your sinuses up. Okay. Is it hot? Nope. No. Nope. Just dill? Yep. Brian, or Jeff, you got some scab? I, I, I don't want to. <laughs> but you didn't have dinner. You got to exactly. do one. You got to do one. You got to do one. Uh, oh. It's, Blake, can you open that door so it doesn't smell like pickles in here? It's mainly because yeah, if your, your children don't shut it closed again. He's he's in bed. He's fine. <laughs> you, you don't expect that taste coming from oh. like a jelly bean. Mm-mm. Oh, it tastes like but, a. But it's a deli pickle. sandwich. <laughs> mm. It gets right in your nose too, without right. the bread and meat and. Like if you just happen to get all pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Starts off with that dill pickly flavor, uh-huh. and then the aftertaste after it sits there for a while. Mm-hmm. The the bean goes the south. jelly bean part. Yeah, is oh. quite unsettling. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's not good because it's like it's a little too dense. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like gum, but not quite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't. That's one of those where it's the flavor great. does not match the vessel in which you're eating it, so it just feels so wrong. Uh huh. I'm not saying the flavor is terrible, but it. I don't just like the flavor. The flavor is fine. I, I don't. If like we put it. them on a deli sandwich, <laughs> it might. <laughs> Uh, oh, I would like the, some the pickle, texture eventually. I would like some pickled jelly beans on that. 
Uh, I think the I think the I think you're right. I think the flavor mm-hmm. is definitely pickle. Like you can tell, like they did a good mm-hmm. job with it. But oh yeah, it's awful. Like uh, it, it gets like it's very strong. I don't think it's awful. I think it's oh, I like pickles, but oh. Once the initial pickle goes away, I think I kind of like it more. Mm. Blake, how you doing down there with it? Okay. He didn't yeah. even try it. Yeah, I did. I had he one. Did. He did. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of that. Eyeballing the Oreos. Aftertaste. We're going to get some, uh, what is this? Dirt cake flavored uh, Oreos here. Um, these should be really good. Yeah. So pass those down. Um, they look good. Uh, my son was super, my youngest son was super excited about these. They're sparkly. Do you have some? Oh. Okay. They are sparkly. Oh, that's, is that the, is worm? That the worm? Is that the worms? Yeah, that's the uh, worm. Pieces of worm. Or on the outside of the, they're on the cookie. Oh, I thought it was Christmas sparklies or something. It is, kind okay. of. Do a first bite with the green. entire cookie. All right, go ahead. There's a light chocolate and a dark chocolate inside. Yeah, and I wasn't too fond of when I saw it was two different chocolates. Yeah. I'm like, you, you already got the Oreo cookie. Mm-hmm. The middle should just be the, the, the dirt cream flavor. I'm kind of disappointed in the size. The cover in the photo that you showed me, I thought these things were like an inch or two thick, man. They do look like double stuffs look in that. the picture. Yeah. They are not. It's full Jim, what do you think? It's a good Oreo, but it doesn't just taste like the chocolate one. Yeah, I'm not getting much different cha- flavor change. Anyone, Jeff? Scamp? Tastes like an Oreo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, like a one of the dark, like the one of the just the chocolate creams, like not. I'm not, I'm not getting like a pudding taste. I get a little slight pudding taste in there. Yeah, I'm not really getting much. Huh? When you break it open, like, you can taste the pudding a little more. Okay. Like yeah, I, I think it's more putting in there than, you know, a regular cookie, but not enough that you, if you didn't know what it was, you would just think it's slightly different than a regular Oreo. Yeah. And That's the fine. sparklies give no flavor to it. Has there been a Oreo that we've been, like, falling in love, like, recently that has come out? I can't really think of any that we really loved. The Cinnabon was good last week, Jim. But we've had that before. I just thought it was eh. I mean, it was good. Lot, I mean, yeah, what do you mean? Korean ones have been very disappointing. Yeah. Only just because of how thin the cookie and then. Well, yeah. they, they were thins. The first three we had were the two of them were thins. Mm-hmm. And then the other one was. I enjoyed the uh, bars, like the cookie. Yeah, those, oh, yeah, were, those like were good. Them. Those were really good. Um, yeah, I'm just. Yeah. Yeah, all, all that criticism aside, I'll still eat half the pack when you open it. Well, I figured oh, that. That's, okay. that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a given. That's a given. I'm getting more. <laughs> There's, I wouldn't expect anything less. I'm disappointed that there are, by the lack of gummy worms included mm-hmm. in this yeah, Oreo. I was, yeah, I agree. Like, I was expecting something. It's very intriguing to me. Yeah. Because I don't even know if the little cre- the they, reds, the spots on the outside of the cookie really do anything. Not really. Not yeah. for me. I mean, it's good. Like I'm saying, it's not uh, bad cookie. And it almost like makes you think it's Christmas themed because it's all red and green. green. And again, like I said, there's blue in there. There's well, a little bit. There's one not yellow. remember one of the very first ones we ever tried was the Swedish fish. Yes, and that's pretty much your gummy flavor. That is true, so. and that was not good. That was not good. We didn't like Swedish fish, right? It. I was not here for that. No, you I would not. say it was not good. Yet for some reason, I was oddly attracted to eating it. Did they have a? It had a red cream. Yeah, but on the outside, what type of cookie was it? A chocolate cookie. It was a chocolate cookie. Okay, I couldn't remember that was. That. It was Swedish fish flavor with chocolate, and those, I think it was like those don't really go together. But I still wanted to keep eating it. I like said, if you want an Oreo, this is it. All right, here we go, Jim. Oh my God, one more thing. Oh, one more thing. No. Here. We, we, have, go, we have to get through some of these peeps. Yeah, we, we've got like a whole. Our peeps are backing up here, so <laughs> give them to Morris. <laughs> Do you like peeps? I, I hate them. Good. Uh, you're going to try some. Why, why are you handing them out? You and I agree on something. <laughs> why are you handing them out? Let me get started on uh, listener feedback. So go keep ahead. moving. Because we've got a lot of shit to get through. Yes, go ahead. There you go, boy. All right, from, uh, damn it. Yeah, that, from, that uh, half of the table don't go. like peeps. 
Big D. Number one fan. That's right. Sunny D. Beaver a- hands. Ape hands. Probably known as. Uh, the licking connection. The jewel of the licking. That's it. Yeah, yeah, Chili yeah. Billy. Delivers. Postman. Delivers thrice. The master of his own domain. Big D. Doug. There you go. Dad. Listening to Jason read the news, are you sure he isn't having a stroke every time you are on air? Uh, I am not sure. He might be. With the amount of sugar we eat on Tuesdays, probably. What a, what a, what are these? Sour strawberry? Sour yes. strawberry. Ugh. Uh, so I may, Doug. I may be having a stroke. I was hoping the sour was more prevalent like last week's. Yeah, they're not really said sour. It tastes like a peep. Mm-hmm. Could be the spike in your triglycerides. Regular peep. <laughs> Well, you didn't taste the sour at all? I mean, they taste strawberry Eat mine. Try yeah. it again. They taste strawberry ish. Yeah. I, I like it. <laughs> These are pretty good. Ryan L. Mm-hmm. Terry at RL Terry. If you don't 1. eat your peep, you can't have any Oreos. How can you have any Oreos if you don't finish your peep? <laughs> I eat your Oreos first. <laughs> Ugh. Can you describe why time and not a golden statue is a real measure of greatness of a film? Timely question here for our Oscar expert, Jeff yes. Morris. I I got the outline and I read mm-hmm. that and I probably read it five times and I don't understand what he's asking. Well, I think he's saying just because oh, something oh. wins a best picture doesn't mean that it's the best film. It's like you said, like over time, what's going to be studied twenty years from now? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, but probably most of the films that came out this year are better than every film that had been released in total before nineteen fifty. Wow, that's not saying. Before 1970, maybe. Wow. Because it's the things that the the groundbreakers did before then, like mm-hmm. Citizen Kane or, or... Greatest Show on Earth. Greatest Show on Earth. Oh. Or, uh, the, the, the real racist one, The Birth of a Nation. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the poster, even. The real racist one, Birth of a Nation. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did. Yes. But uh, if you watch a lot of those today, today they could be boring, and there's a lot of films yeah. that do the same thing a lot better. <laughs> but is it because also those older films? There are a lot, like they're ba- a lot of them are based on plays, right? Or they the film is like a structured like a play, right? There's a lot of three hour long films back in the 40s and 50s that felt like it was a play. Well, yeah, when you watch Hamlet, you're going to get that. Yes, that's or true. Henry the Fifth. Oh, that might be. Or that with our plays, Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. Movies. Or, or, or <laughs> Hamlet again. <laughs> Sorry. What about Hamlet? Yeah, that, that next release of Hamlet. How about Julius Caesar? No. <laughs> no. Um, I, uh, but, well, the, the, I mean, how many Fantastic Four movies do you got to go through until they get it right? The Seven. way, the <laughs> way I look tell. at it, the, the Oscars aren't necessarily telling you you know, in the in the future, you know, these movies are going to be highly regarded. What the Oscars tell you is the general thought process of where we are at the time they're handed out. Okay. By filmmakers of the time. Yes. So these are the filmmakers. This is what we feel is the best at this particular Sorry, moment. Sorry, Shawshank except, Redemption. Forrest except comes except for Moonlight, where they're like, oh, we need to throw in this one because La La Land's getting too much hype and he's going to get too big a head and he won't be able to to make First Man after this. Mm. I'm sure he could have made First Man even <laughs> winning the, the Oscar. I was wrong. La La Land was really good. It's fantastic. The, it's still the best film of all time. It is. It really is. God, that peep sucked. <laughs> I like that peep. It's a good peep. No. It's a very good peep. It wasn't was as perfect. good as last week's peep or two weeks ago peep. Oh, but I like that. Yeah, Jeff, why don't you tell me what my peep tastes like? Mm, that's not what we do here. Oh, I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got here, Blake? I'm trying to pass it off to the the new guy, quote unquote. Pittsburgh nerd, what is your favorite breakfast sandwich? Obviously coming from Pittsburgh, his must uh, include corned beef, Scrapple. you know, slaw, and like Scrap- fries, French fries, French on, fries it. on it. Yeah. Yeah. Scrapple's the other end of the state. That's oh, Philadelphia. Pittsburgh style is uh, French fries on it. Okay. Coleslaw. Scrapple. And a cookie table. Scrapple's on my mind because we were watching Tournament of Champions and they used Scrapple in the. They one. did. So. You, you, you noticed that they had the bout right before it, they had pork and gata or pork and uh, oats. Oats? Yes. The steel cut oats and no one made gata. That is true. That is true. <sighs> 
I don't know what to make with steel cut oats. <laughs> I'm like, Getta! <laughs> well, the guy that, that would, show. It's a really fun show. The guy that would have made Getta is the guy that I love to show anymore. Uh, they showed him. <laughs> very, very <laughs> briefly. <laughs> very briskly. Uh, I will say a Getta fried egg and cheese on white toast oh. from Pleasant Ridge Chili um, is my favorite. Okay. I'm a good simple um, sausage, egg, and cheese on a, a toast or a bagel. Croissant. I'm not a big croissant. Uh, I a will good say, croissant. How's if you're that? talking like fast food, um, breakfast burritos from Wendy's and from uh, Mc, uh, McDonald's are actually really good. I like the breakfast burritos. Those aren't fucking sandwiches. I'm just telling you what they are. That's, that's, not, the that's question. not the well, question. That's a sandwich for me. Sorry. I don't know. It's between uh, some style of bread. Oh, that, uh, that, that's a burrito. Yeah, it is. Burritos are sandwiches. That's my sandwich. That's my sandwich. Well, You're if wrong. we're talking fast food, I'll take the uh, Burger King Chris sandwich. Oh, okay. The breakfast baconator from Wendy's is actually pretty solid. Okay. Jim? Uh, let's go with the, the – uh, that's the uh, which one they just brought back at McDonald's? The steak and egg. Uh, I was about to ask. Remember when they had the steak the, and egg bagel? The bagel. Yeah, oh, they, they just brought that back. They did steak and egg uh, bagel. Is there a shamrock shake back yet? Uh, it's been back for three weeks now. Nice, nice. I remember one time, you know, at work, someone was going to pick up some breakfast at McDonald's, and I asked them to get me uh, like a egg, uh, ham, and cheese bagel, and they wouldn't sell them that. Why? Because that's not what came on their bagels. <laughs> they, they, I'm like, but they've sold it in the past because I've had it. Uh, so uh, then he got me, instead of getting a bagel sandwich, he got me this stuff on the McMuffin, and I hate their McMuffins. Not big McMuffin. Uh, my department does a breakfast every Friday. So uh, people bring in. I was in charge a couple weeks ago, so... I downloaded the McDonald's app because it was one of the few things on the way in from where I'm coming in at at that time. And uh, so I did McDonald's, did a McDonald's app. Then uh, I get up there, 625 in the morning. Uh, I pull up. They're like, sorry, we had to cancel your order of $56. Okay, why? We have no sausage. I'm like, it's 625 in the morning. And they're like, we actually don't have any eggs either. (laughs) (laughs) It's 625. You You know what happened, Jason? The manager uh, left for another job, and during his two weeks, didn't make any orders. Who would do that? I don't know. What an asshole. I figure all their stuff sitting on a semi-truck in New York somewhere. Well, actually, I said, isn't that out there in the back back right there? Can I just grab a box and open it? (laughs) They're like, no. You didn't say that. And uh, I was hoping... Like, oh, maybe it's just me because they didn't want to make that much. Uh, the person behind me came up, like, who was ordering, and they were like, just so you know, we have no sausage or eggs. And the guy's like, thanks. <laughs> and out he goes. <laughs> like, there you go, McDonald's. Thanks. Well, that was when that, I went that, through Taco Bell on Cinco de Mayo, and the guy's like, we have no tacos. <laughs> I mean, that's a busy day for them. I, really, I can't get over that you still go to Taco Bell. I can't. Oh, I, I did it last week. All did they talk you? about is like, dude, I got to hit Taco Bell. <laughs> And I was disappointed they got my two gorditos and taco right. Oh, I guess I got the sad. order right. <laughs> that was sad that they got it right. Uh, I got home and I opened the bag with anticipation. Damn it, I got what I ordered. I, I got the Mexican pizza. Damn it. Yeah. I was a little disappointed that McDonald's did away with the uh, the chicken, like their their uh, crispy chicken breakfast. Mm-hmm. Like it was, they had it on a, like you could get it on a biscuit or a bagel mm-hmm. or McGriddle. The McGriddle. Oh. The McGriddle. I heard the White Castle breakfast sandwiches were actually really good. They are. So my department, sometimes somebody brings those in. They are actually pretty good. You know the biggest problem White I Castle have with all of these different breakfast sandwiches? What's that? You have to be up early to eat them. <laughs> Before not, 11 a.m.? Not White Castle. <laughs> they got all-day breakfast? McDonald's does, too, doesn't it? Or do they get rid of that? McDonald's they used menu. To have, they used uh, to have, the, yeah. The, they have, like, a very limited yeah. all-day, all day, like, gotcha. sausage. Co- COVID knocked it down a lot. Yeah, it's like. They, they used to have the 24-hour egg McMuffin. Yeah. And then they stopped. Because yeah. they ran out of eggs. In sausage. Because they realized their McMuffins were nasty. Oh, she like a McMuffin? We have no eggs or sausage. We got cheese. Advertising 24-hour egg McMuffins if you don't have egg McMuffins. We got bacon. (laughs) I'm in. 
Give me all the eggs and bacon you have. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Hold on. What I think you heard was bring me some bacon and eggs. But what I said was bring me all of your bacon and eggs. Uh, Good old Ron Swanson. Good old Ron. Go ahead. Egg McMuffin. I can eat them all day, man. Really? Yeah. What if it were in a burrito? I hate the rest of McDonald's, but the Egg McMuffin, that's it. I'm not a McDonald's fan at all, but the 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 breakfast burritos I like. That's it. Next week, we're going to bring in the Egg McMuffin flavored peeps. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I will no longer be volunteering to drive out here every Tuesday. I'm, after, I will be here next, next week. So after next week, week no more peeps, please. Right. Scab, I hope you like peeps at your house. <laughs> Jeff won't eat my peep. Oh, I that's not what we do here, Blake. No, no, that's your peep. How's my peep taste? Come on. Uh, Blake, right. you're up. Wrap this up. Professor Hashtag One at Dr. Numberoni, if aliens visited Earth, what is the one thing you think they would feel is the most disappointing thing about humans and the best thing about humans? Um, Taste. Peeps. I'm going to say they would be most disappointed in the way that most humans treat animals. Okay. The American South. (laughs) Best or disappointed? We're, we're disappointed. Oh, okay. Oh, I was going to say how just humans... lost Alabama again. <laughs> Roll Tide. It's, it's how humans Back. taste. I, they'll either think it's the best or the worst. You think? There, there'll be no in between. You know we're that? either the, the best delicacy or the oh. nastiest... Uh, the way that we taste, like when they eat us? Yes. Okay. It's to so, serve man. It, okay. I got it. Uh, the, the, good remember the V miniseries? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They did like rats. The they mo- liked us too, yeah. yeah. The most disappointing thing they'll find is the Joe Rogan podcast. And then the best thing would be Hobie. We we are a thousand times better than Rogan. <laughs> um the best thing about humans <laughs> our perseverance. Our our poli- our political <laughs> <laughs> it, it's gotta be hilarious to, from an outside right? I, world to watch it. You know what? The, if they are people watchers, they love the mess that we make. <laughs> oh, my God. We are a good spectacle for the... They're putting the, the same two guys up for president again. You need to watch this yeah. episode. <laughs> Weren't they the oldest people ever to run for president four years ago? And they're four years older. <laughs> what could go wrong? Highest ratings ever for Mars. <laughs> <laughs> On Mars. Have you seen like all of the like the things like that happened in 2020? And that are like yes. happening like they now. mirror what happens now. Yeah. So like everyone's obviously there's going to be some sort of plague, plague or like plague. You know, Chinese virus. Yes. You know, coup thing that they're going to do to try to kill us. And I mean, if we have to go back into the houses again for six months, let's fine. go. That's fine. Don't blame me. I voted for Kodos. Oh, good. <laughs> threw your vote away. T- today was the last day I was in the office. <laughs> Four Ever. years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Today was my go to the office day. That was Monday for us. Yeah. And and uh, I have four my, years. I yeah. have my twenty twenty people plus calendar up on the wall in the cubicle. And the last day I have scratched out was March twelfth. That was my yeah. last day. And I remember sitting there thinking about it. It was like, you know what? With everything going on and again the case of March Madness. I sat there and I said, you know what? I'm gonna take my laptop home. And I took it home for three fucking years. <laughs> Hard to I will say, though, I got nothing wrong in March Madness in 2020. <laughs> Perfect bracket. Perfect, Perfect bracket. bracket. <laughs> yeah. Vegas lost out on that. Um, um, okay. I tried to work from home and was told I had to come in. <laughs> you, you were essential. Yes, I, I was essential personnel. You are. Uh, okay. There you go. Um, Oscar wrap-up with Scab Jeff. Jeff, I'll be honest. I didn't watch the Oscars. I did see Schwarzenegger and DeVito. I saw the clip that they were going after Michael Keaton. I thought that was humorous. Because he was Batman. Yes. I saw naked John Cena. I did see John Cena. Oh, he had the uh, the envelope in front of his... Well, And he had flip-flops he, on. He was giving he, out the award for best costume. The extra large <laughs> envelope. Yes. And it, costumes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what were you most disappointed in? Uh, in the Oscars? Yeah, like what film should have won something and didn't? Um, or actually, I was, I was nominated. Anything that should have been nominated? Uh, actually, I'm 
kind of happy with uh, what won and everything. I... What about something not getting nominated for like Best International because the idiot French didn't put it up? Well, I think by far the best film of the year was Anatomy of a Fall, which was a French film that they didn't put forward as the French. Well, doesn't it still – isn't Anatomy of a Fall in the English language though? No, it's all – it's all – French and uh, it's, it's dubbed in Danish. Switzerland. Oh. I think they may have had some in people Japanese. that spoke a little bit of English. Okay, I'm about to say the clip they had when it won for best screenplay. The clip they showed, I thought was in English. Yeah, okay, that, that's possible because I think that the the French and the the Swiss one they didn't speak each other's language real well, but they both spoke English real well, so they were able to do that. But it's a it's a movie about it's like a much better version of Twelve Angry Men. It's there's a murder or accident, and she's on trial. They they don't tell you what happens, but it's just through the the way that the camera goes, how you're following them. Is do you think she did it or, or didn't? And it, it's is it Japanese subtitles? Uh, I think that you probably could get <laughs> okay or Japanese dubbed where there's okay, some gotcha. really racist guy speaking with a <laughs> like in, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> Japanese dubbed with Russian subtitles. Gotcha. Is the most super boring? Uh, but yeah, the the shorts that won, I think, were the best. Like uh, the Wes Anderson finally won an Oscar. Uh, or did he win for Grand Budapest Best Director? I don't think so. But uh, this could be Wes Anderson's first, and he deserved it. This could be his best film. The short, the the wonderful story of Henry Sugar. Uh, were you upset that? Spider-Man did not win the animated film. No, I Because one of the voice actors was not happy. He did apologize. It's half a movie. It, there's no reason that that should have been up for Best Picture. Uh, I mentioned this when we first saw it. Uh, my daughter was like, that's it? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, honey, it's coming out. You know, there it's a third one coming out. I understand, but couldn't they end this one? I'm like, nope. <laughs> like, at least Empire Strikes Back. It stopped. At, there's a, there's a, there's there's a stop it, point. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but this... Stopped in the middle of a cliffhanger. So what if you like had terminal cancer and you were going to die and you watch this movie and you're like, oh, no point in living now. <laughs> well, you know, you're not going to live till the next one comes well, out. Especially so. since they pushed it back. <laughs> it's a year pushback. And see, my, my question was, uh, I guess you said you didn't realize, but can you really give away an award as a best picture or something? That is different, no matter depending on what screen you watched it on. There was many different versions of it. A lot it. of different versions with some subtle things going on differently. Some which... didn't have the va- vampire fangs from Spider Man 2029. Is that why <laughs> Clue didn't win Best Picture? That's yes. why Clue, uh, everyone knew it was the Best Picture, but they didn't. They had the three different endings. They could have just nominated three times for Best Picture. Oh, oh. Clue ending one, Clue ending yeah. two, and Clue ending three. Clue ending and then three would have won. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amadeus was a couple years earlier. Oh, my bad. Um, is Oppenheimer that good? I watched it again very, very recently. Mm-hmm. Today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> after it won? Uh, after it won. Uh, I was just at work all day today, so it was yeah. a long movie and not easy to... Yes. But um, it's not great, I don't think... I, I feel that movies are moving in the direction where it's just like it seems like a uh, uh, like a live action documentary, okay, or not live action. Yeah, live I action, what you're not, but, it, but it's like they're making yeah. a documentary with actors, mm-hmm. and, single and camera, single camera and documentary, like to do the like TV I think, shows. Yeah, I think he tried to 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 do something with the back and forth, the the non sequential. And the uh, the color versus black and white, which which felt amateurish to me. How he how he did that, which he should have been able. To, he's a good enough director to be able to do that without or to to flip from one idea to another without flipping back from color to black and white. And it's just, I like that they didn't focus on like the bomb was mm-hmm. like that was in the background the whole time, but it was all them talking about the. Is is he a communist? Is he not? Are the Americans the good guys? Are the are they just? Are we as, the baddies? Yeah, and I, I like that, but I feel that especially Christopher Nolan could have done that, so it was done more interestingly. Do you like Nolan as a director? Yeah, I think okay. that uh, like Dunkirk, uh, that that scene where 
that they have three different timelines that all take place over long and they meet at that one moment and that one moment is just perfect and magical and then he started with that uh, memento that or i guess he didn't start but the yeah. second one was uh, memento which is that weird backward storytelling and and dark and the dark knight trilogy was interstellar uh, i i don't I love interstellar I don't hate Interstellar. Yeah. He did Inception too, it. right? Inception, yeah. yeah. Tenet. Yeah. Well, we all have bad. The Prestige. Oh, he did, oh, he did yeah. the Prestige. Oh, that Prestige. Well. That, that might be my favorite of his. I do like that one. That was a good one. I've, I've heard that he that Nolan kind of threw this one in the bag because he kept getting farted on. <laughs> <laughs> By who? David Crumholtz. That's right. Friend, friend of the show, David Crumholtz. Yep. Just just some insider info there. Oh, that was. Did he eat his peep sense. yet? He, yes, I did. Gave, okay. he gave it away. It's gone, I so, so I can have more Oreos. he destroyed it if he didn't eat it. <laughs> but I actually kind of feel that Killers of the Flower Moon was the same way. It, it seemed like it was just telling the story very straight on. Like, Scorsese is a, a wonderful director. Like, like he invent like, uh, that scene where that, like, the cliche, the camera follows him in Goodfellas. It's, but he doesn't just do it just to make a cool shot. It's you're walking in there in the back door with him. Mm-hmm. And then Taxi Driver, when he's talking on the the phone about, uh, hey, I, I didn't know that taking you to the porno movie would make you upset. And you're and you're embarrassed, but you're not sure if you're supposed to be embarrassed. But the camera pulls back and you're like, oh. so he knows how to make a film. But this is just straight on. It's not. Yeah. And De Niro played like a mob boss cowboy he's so such a great stretch for De Niro <laughs> playing king I feel oh they, they did say that they're gonna do a casting award next year oh oh nice so if somebody casts De Niro as a as a mafia guy he does have he, they got a real chance he does have a new kid okay just leave him alone okay he's up late at night <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. no you're good uh, I feel like a little bit just how I watched it because uh, like you're I talking read, Oppenheimer or Killers uh, Killers of the okay. Flower Moon like I because I read the book um, and I feel like because that story was really heavy, like he didn't want to put his too much of hit of him into it to take away from the story. But I, I, I can see where people would think that it was just a, you know, not a Scorsese film. The, the, the wife character, did she do, because I, when I first saw it, I thought, she better be up for best best actress because this is phenomenal. And then I saw Poor Things, and she probably deserved it more. But uh, but uh, it was she did. Is that how her character was written in the book? I never read the book. Pretty much, yeah. Because it was that's how I understood the character to be because she acted that, that way. way. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. Um, do you feel Patricia Arquette should have won for Boyhood Two? Electric Boogaloo? Um, yes. Because you were a big fan of her in that. <laughs> uh, she is... Uh, I, I, I think I had another entry for my worst performances of all time. It was the Sofia Coppola mm-hmm. <laughs> from Godfather 3. Her from Boyhood. Okay. Um, uh, I can't think of it. I think there was one this... Oh, it was uh, Jodie Foster from Nyad. No! Oh. She was... <laughs> she. Uh, she was like awful. Like I could have acted better than her, and that's Jodie Foster. So you you <laughs> would have been a more convincing Diana Naya than Jodie Foster was. No, she wasn't. She was the friend. Oh, she wasn't even the main character. That was Annette Benning. Oh, you're right. That wasn't Annette Benning. Annette Benning. So Annette Benning was fine as Diana. Oh, I, I think that she was carrying <laughs> Jodie Foster in this, and I think she you could tell sometimes that she was a little annoyed that Jodie Foster was doing so poorly. <laughs> Uh, do you feel Robert Downey Jr. snubbed somebody when he accepted the award? At That's first, the rumor. He's a monster is what one of the articles said. He's the villain of the Oscars is what I was reading. What, did he not thank Chris Evans or no, something? No, it was the guy that uh, won it last year. Uh, short round? Yeah. I guess he snubbed him when he took the uh, award from him. He, like He didn't make eye contact is what they said. There were five people there shaking his hand. It's he was pretty... the only one that he didn't shake his hand. Isn't that also his first Oscar? Downey? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he his was third nomination for... But he's a villain. <laughs> Fuck off. No, people I thought on you're... social media are going nuts. No, no, Jimmy, well, there's Jimmy your Kimmel was a villain because he made jokes about uh, Robert Downey Jr. being a drug addict. Correct. Correct. 
Uh-huh. Although it was quite entertaining, him live reading that tweet by Trump tweet, Trump, Trump tweet. during it, even though everyone, like all the producers, told him not to do it. <laughs> he still did it. It mm-hmm. was amazing. Well, for Blake's sake, you'd be fan. You'd be happy to know that the song that won best song went something like this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we gotta stop. We don't want to get. <laughs> oh, thank God. Billy but the I am Ken oh performance God. is actually real good. Yeah, Are you yeah. okay with Barbie not winning many awards? It, it won one. It won one. I am the Ken, Billy Eilish yeah. song. Yeah. I, I I did not think that it was an Oscar worthy movie at all. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it should have been up for Oscars. Yeah. I, I did like how at the end uh, when uh, Pacino was mm-hmm. presenting it, when he was supposed to read all the <laughs> oh, uh, nominations. All of, he said, oh, I read Oppenheimer. I <laughs> my eyes see Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> That was the most awkward. Yeah, yeah was, that was, was even more reading. Was he supposed to read the nominations, like, or since they showed them all throughout? They the said event? they said that's why he didn't read them. He said it the next day that he apologized because he said that I saw them throughout the night, so I didn't think I needed to read them. Yeah, it was. Was that more awkward than getting the wrong film? <laughs> <laughs> he should have just picked a song. Okay. And then it, my eyes see up, and and then the music. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, just so everyone knows, it's nine twenty nine. Thank you. Yeah, well, we heard. I didn't hear it. Oh, I did. Oh, he, he had it on quiet. I guess sitting right uh, next. I to heard him. it too. I didn't hear it. Sorry. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, last thing. Anything else you want to say about the Oscars? Um, I won the trophy. Good job. Uh, we apologize. Next I, w- year, I want to recount. <laughs> next year we will have you on before the show. Uh, before I, the I do really like the video that we made. Yeah, though. it was good. Is that going to be up for a short film? It, it could be. I think it was better than our slap video <laughs> that, that yeah, we did that year. On, we could put it on Hobie if you would like. It, it could be a floppy nominated short of the year. Oh, oh. Jim oh wins, no, Jen filmed it. I didn't film it. Well, he lost. <laughs> Again. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, you I directed, directed it. I did yes. direct it. <laughs> she, she was just the director of photography. Damn it. <laughs> cinematographer. <laughs> cinem- so if it wins for cinematography, she gets I hope I win for best supporting actor <laughs> <laughs> in a TV I think or you were probably series. main actor in that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's I'm a question. I'm for Pam. She got my vote. <laughs> <laughs> I have an Oscars question. Mm-hmm. Who, who would you guys like to see host? Like, I feel like all of these award shows, it's the same th- three people. Well, who would I like to yeah, see host? It doesn't, I don't care. I'm just Anthony like... Anthony Jeselnik. Okay. <laughs> Anne Hathaway and James Franco. Okay. <laughs> no. Um, I, like, like I'm just, I like Ricky Jervis. I, I, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> because he mm-hmm. did great and Yeah. And the wait, Golden wait, Globes. Wait, I don't think they'll do and, that. And he makes comments, and he makes the people so uncomfortable. I didn't mind Jimmy Kimmel though. Like I thought, Kimmel did a pretty decent job. And, and and I didn't feel uncomfortable for him. Like he seemed very confident insulting them. And if they yeah. gave him look, gave him looks, I didn't feel bad for the host. No. Like, what about Joe Co- Joe Coy? Is he better than Joe Coy? <laughs> I think he's hosted his first and last <laughs> award show. Hey, we need you to host in ten days. Nope. <laughs> I was just curious. Like, yeah. it just feels like it's always like the yeah, I, same. I, like, it was Billy is a good Crystal one. like every year for like mm. a yeah. decade or something. And then Bob Hope before him yeah. for a generation. Oh, jeez. I forgot about that. Yeah. No, but I really want to see like an Anthony Jeselnik. <laughs> they don't want to see that. Tosh. They'll just tear them Dang apart. So I was thinking somewhere uh, similar, like uh, comedian wise, but I think Bill Burr would be an amazing oh, host. Bill Burr would be funny. Of one of those award shows. Yeah. I don't want it to be John Mulaney because I have no idea what he said when he... Uh, he was just giving the uh, <laughs> plot to uh, Field of Dreams. That's all. <laughs> Not sure why. No, and- <laughs> I don't know why, but... <laughs> yeah. Blake, uh, who would you like to see host the Oscars? I don't watch award shows. Okay. The only award show I'm interested in is, you know, the Hobies. 
floppy floppies. Words. <laughs> the, that's right. the Hobies. <laughs> yeah. That's not even what they're called. Coming to the CW this fall. <laughs> the Hobies. Put it down. Yeah. Put it down. Put it down. Oh, the we didn't CW? Do CW. Yeah, CW Network. even around still? They still have <laughs> we didn't some that. original programming along did you with know wrestling. We did TV schedules they for have this Walker. fall. And do you know what the number one show is this fall? They have Walker. Walker, yeah. You know what the number one show is I do that not. we created? Not good, not great. It'll make you ejaculate. <laughs> Uh, yeah. It's, you, know uh, the, you know what the worst uh, rated show that we created for the fall was? Uh, cannibalism is okay with your host, Army Hammer. Uh, it did not do well. Canceled quickly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they, they ran out of people <laughs> to cast in it. Uh, different haircuts and different hair is doing really well, though. So I, I knew that was going to be Two different hit. shows. Two different shows. One's with Jane Lynch, one's with Jane Curtin. So, yeah, I knew really that. Which one's show. better? Uh, different hair. I like the Jane Curtin version. I prefer the Lynch version. <laughs> That's the original, so I right, could see yeah. that. Yeah, I could see that. How uh, is uh, Tapper, Tepper, Topper, Tepper, Taffer, Taffer, <laughs> Topper, Tepper, Tepper? They've done a great job remodeling. Uh, <laughs> they they keep getting someone added to the cast every week. That <laughs> um, yeah. Well, what's just Topper, ta- Tapper, and Teffer? Yeah. Uh, ta- no, Topper and Taffer. Yeah. Yeah. But then Taffer came along. Were we just making things up? Yes. Okay. Are we going to add Obi Toppin? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Toppin? Uh, what, oh, another show that did just get renewed for two more years, uh, two more seasons, Wibbly Wobbly with Michael Rowe. Can't uh. wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. M- Mike Rowe is just a star. He is. Trade Be school. electrician. Be an electrician. Go oh. to trade school. Although apparently a lot of people have also been watching the original show we came up with, The Golden Bachelor. Yes, yes. No one uh, died on ours. Spoiler, the first season, no one dies. Uh, Jeff, I don't know if you heard this or not, but the internet doesn't like it when you comment um, that you're surprised that the people on the show didn't die. That was the greatest thing I took away from it. The internet not so friendly to that. Someone may have gotten blasted after his comment. Was this, was this on Twitter? Uh, this was on Facebook. Yeah. So I mean, I I get it because that's where the their, the old people go. That's their their market. That's their prime, you know, group. Yeah. Uh, but they didn't like that when so I. You, so you did it on the Golden Bachelor page, or you did it on your own page? And they uh, on the you. Golden Bachelor page, I went. I went to them. <laughs> well, like what? Some, something surprising happened, and you were like, "Oh, what? Did someone, someone die? die?" And they just went full blast on him. Who knew? Because they were vague about what happened. Yeah. She left. <laughs> yeah, like they showed her, like like the clip was like her like turning away and walking out. And they're like, oh, I guess what? Like, what happens next? And I was like, did she die? <laughs> <laughs> so if you were hosting the Oscars, you would read through those posts? Yes, I would read those. Yes. <laughs> uh, Jeff, can you give me some News of the Geek music real quick? Oh, no, I'm not set up for that. Okay, just fake it. It's time for the News of the Geek. Uh, real quick, um, let's see here. Oh, we'll do this one. Uh, we'll skip the first one. Perlawandcrime.com, where Blake gets all of his news from. Uh, another great lawsuit. The mother of a 15-year-old boy who died riding on top of a New York subway car is suing the city's transit agency and social media companies that promoted the viral and dangerous subway surfing challenge videos. She said inspired her son to try climbing onto a moving car. Zachary Nazario opened an unlocked train door and walked between moving cars before climbing to the roof of a Brooklyn-bound J train on February 20th, 2023. A beam struck him in the head on the Williamsburg Bridge while the train crossed the East River. He fell between cars on the tracks and was run over by another train and died. Jesus. Uh, quote, social media and the MTA, they failed my son, said Norma Nazario, told WABC TV. Matthew P. Bergman, founding attorney of Social Media Victims Law Center. Ugh, douche. <laughs> who represents the Nazario family, told the outlet that Zachary had some responsibility, too. Quote, no one is saying that there was not shared fault here, but what we are saying is that this didn't have to happen. I'm saying there's not shared fault here. All right, Matthew P. Bergman, just burn in hell. Uh, The lawsuit (laughs) names the Metropolitan uh, Transportation Authority for creating, quote, a serious and foreseeable risk to harm to the boy. Also names ByteDance Incorporate, which owns TikTok, and Meta Platforms, 
a statement in a statement, New York City Transit President Richard Davies said, fuck off. No, sorry. Said, we said it over and over. Do not climb on top of trains because that won't end well. And we implore parents to tell their children and friends to warn friends. Avoid tragedy by riding inside. Is it, yeah, isn't that why they put seats inside oh. the train? Yeah, they don't put seats on top they of the train. Top. I mean, if they had seats on top and it happened, then I understand you sue them. You know, may- maybe if they installed that dancing floor on top of the train, they might have a problem. But Tom Hanks is up there all the time. His uh, homeless guy in Polar Express. Yeah. Court Doxman said Zachary was, quote, targeted, goaded, and encouraged to engage in subway surfing. At best, the social um, media defendants make these engineered addiction by design programming decisions to push young Americans into maximizing their engagement with their social media products by any means necessary. At worst, is the social media defendants operate in a manner that intends to recklessly disregard the cata- t- cata- catastrophic. catastrophic harms it is inflicted on children in the U.S., the complaint said. The MTA knew young people were trying to climb atop moving subways, but did little to lock doors or restrict access to lawsuit alone. Because if they lock doors then, and there's an the emergency, hazard. people die. Yeah. The lawsuit spells out Zachary's youth, including when he first got his cell phone at the age of 12, quickly got into TikTok and Instagram, developed an addiction to the platforms, court documents said. Sounds that's like great parenting. parenting. Yeah, that's, that's, that's parenting right there for you. He binge-watched videos promoting subway surfing, in which people climb to top moving trains, and other dangerous challenges a minor should not have been allowed to see. TikTok and Instagram began pushing to 15-year-old Zachary a continuous stream of dangerous challenge videos, the lawsuit says. Instagram was Instagram was aware that Zachary was seeing content that promoted the dangerous behavior and wanted to profit off of him trying it for himself. How do they profit off that? Um, that we killed another. That's ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Got another one. It's like Death Race like, 2000. Yeah, <laughs> it's a new version of Death Race. <laughs> Thousands of, endanger- of dangerous and inappropriate videos flooded his account in the days before he died. All trying to increase his level of engagement, court documents said. Subway surf has been around since the 1980s, but the MTA noted a spike in people riding outside the trains in 2021, fueled by social media daredevils. In my day, we'd go back and forth from school uphill on top of the subway. <laughs> <laughs> five people were killed during the stunt in 2023, including Zachary, compared with five subway deaths over four years between 2018 and 2022. Which doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So there you go. Another Play lawsuit. stupid games, win stupid prizes. It, I think most of those subway deaths were uh, people getting pushed. Yeah, what, what's his name? Uh, Kevin Spacey pushing people in front of the yeah. trains. Yep. Oh, man, he got really good at that. He House did. of Hearts. Uh, so right. algorithms are killing your children. Yes, not. Yeah, the parents have zero. Well, they did say he has some responsibility, but not a lot. No, no, this is not on the parents at all. He's I, a minor. I blame yep. the internet. Yep. Um. So yeah, um, there's a good lawsuit right there. So good for them. <laughs> you said it was a good lawsuit. Good for them. So uh, also, uh, Bad Boys Three or Four. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, they're filming in Miami, and they're yeah. kicking out homeless people. Oh, well, I mean, the police were very sympathetic. We tell them that there's places to go. <laughs> well, do they not go to the places that they're are filmed? <laughs> the places they're well, then to there go aren't to. places to go. Then nope, 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 nope. And we're not trying to show that they're not there. Uh, that they're not welcomed, but we got things to do. So there you go. Uh, Jeff, give me some box office news real quick. Uh, the box office of March 8th to March 10th. Uh, we just got the top five list. Number one, Kung Fu Panda 4. Waha! Made $58 million in its opening weekend on an $80 million budget. Dune Part 2 made $46 million, a total of $157 million on a $190 million budget. Heard it was good. Haven't seen it. Imaginary made ten million in its opening weekend on a ten million dollar budget. I heard that wasn't good. Cabrini made seven point six million on its opening weekend on a budget of six point four million. Winner, winner of the week. Got there his go. budget back in one week. There you go. And rounding out the top five, Bob Marley One Love made four point one million, a total of eighty nine point five million on a seventy million dollar budget. Upcoming March 15th of 2024, Love Lies Bleeding. Uh, Love Lies Bleeding. Let me find it here. Oh, you weren't ready. Gym manager Lou falls for Jackie, a bodybuilder who is passing through town en route to a competition in Las Vegas. 
starring Anna Barshnikov, uh, everybody's favorite under actress, Kristen Stewart. Isn't that the same plot as Million Dollar Baby? Yes. <laughs> Just move the stool. I don't think they found love in Million Dollar Baby. Mm, well, they, they didn't say that they found love, did they? Wasn't that... Well, it's Fall, in the title. He, he falls for Jackie. He falls for her. Right? It's in the well, title. she falls for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's where the bleeding comes in. <laughs> oh. uh, Dave, in Dave the... Franco's in it. Uh, oh, it must be good then. Oh, Gina Malone. Okay. Gina or Jenna? Jenna. Okay. Oh, uh, reuniting Ed, some Twilight actresses. <laughs> Ed Harris. Hmm. Ooh, Ed. Ed's good. Mm-hmm. I thought he quit acting, didn't he? Maybe this was his last. No, role. I was thinking of uh, Hackman. Gene oh yeah, Hackman? Gene. <laughs> I, I get that mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> one was in replacements; the other one wasn't. Oh, Keith, Hackman. Keith Jardine's in it. I bet he bet he plays some type of fighter <laughs> in a movie about fighters and yep. bodybuilders. What else we got, Jeff? Uh, we have Arthur the King. Is this an Aquaman sequel? Ooh, I hope so. <laughs> an ad- an adventure racer. Adopts a stray dog named Arthur to join him in an epic endurance race. Oh, it's not even King Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not even a sequel to that. I thought this was a Dudley Moore follow up. <laughs> <laughs> it's Natalie Emmanuel. Oh, I like Mark Natalie Walker. Emmanuel. Yeah, it's we've, been Emmanuel. For, we've been needing a sequel to Arthur on the Rocks for so long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark Wahlberg, Simu Lu. Yeah, okay. Uh, Juliet Rylance, Michael Landis. Who plays the dog? That's the important thing. Skippy. Oh, love Skippy. I did see the uh, previews for this one. I think we saw Aquaman. Oh. It looked okay. Uh, what else you got? And we have One Life. One Life. Sir Nicholas Winton, a young London broker who, in the months leading up to World War II, rescued over 600 children from Nazi-occupied Czechoslovakia. Uh, uplifting. It is Anthony Hopkins, oh, Le- Lena Olin. Oh, I have been seeing trailers for that. Lena and, uh, Dunham? Esquire and Johnny Flynn, Helena Bonham Carter. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> okay. Directed by Tim Burton? Nope. But it's a March release, so... Uh, yeah. <laughs> So as Oscar worthy as that sounds, it's not going to. No. Directed by James Havens. Okay. Uh, there you go. Jeff, you got some top five music? Hey, what's uh what, what what's that one movie that's coming out that everybody's looking at? It looks like it's like a nineteen seventies lost footage film, late night talk shows, like interview with the devil or something. What? Yeah, you, you haven't seen uh, the, the the trailer for this? It bro. looks pretty good, man. Oh. I think that was a dream that you had. <laughs> no, not that one. <laughs> no, no, no it's, it's coming out in theaters like in a week or two. And I'm like, why didn't they save this for Halloween? But uh, it's got like uh, perfect Rotten Tomatoes I'll find or, it. or something. I'll find Jim, it. You got it? No, I'll look for it, but yeah. It's like, what is it called? Like uh, Late Night with the Devil or something like that. And it's... Uh, Okay. It looks pretty. I've seen I've seen the previews for it. It's, it's like okay. Five Nights at Freddy's? No, not oh. that. <laughs> March 22nd, 2024. Yeah, what's it called? Late Night with the Devil. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what it is. Late Night It is not based on a true story. No, but... <laughs> that's what one of the questions. Late they could have faked everybody out. The said, Devil! Yeah. Uh, there's this small movie that's coming out this week that Jason didn't put on the list. What? It's uh, Knox Goes Away. When a contract killer has a rapidly evolving form of dementia, he's offered an opportunity to redeem himself by saving the life of the adult son of whom he had been estranged. It's uh, starring like little known people like Al Pacino, Marissa Gay Harden, Michael Keaton, James Marsden. Never heard of him. <laughs> Director Michael Keaton. Not on the list. Was not on the list that I saw. Uh, Late Night with the Devil comes out March 22nd. Yeah. So we'll talk about this. We'll talk next about it week. next week. No, we probably won't because <laughs> Jason won't be 15th. here, so we won't have a, a, Did not a see good it on outline. So bring it with you next week, and we'll talk oh. about it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Give me some top five. Uh, top five this week is top five favorite bullies. Oh, I'm sorry, not fictional. favorite. Fictional bullies. Top five fictional bullies. Uh, Jeff, bully, scam, bully, go first. Bully, 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 bully. I have Garfield the cat is my number five. He is a bully. He bullies Odie so much. 
Uh, even John. John. Yeah. Even John. And the lasagna. <laughs> uh, Jeff? Uh, let's see. My number five, I've got uh, Harley Keener. He was the original bully on Boy Meets World. Oh, okay. Uh, he gave Corey Matthews shit trouble. And it, and it always seemed like whenever things were going wrong for Corey, then Harley would show up to make it worse. Did you ever give him a swirly? Probably. <laughs> or he had his thugs give him the swirlies. Uh, my number five uh, from The Simpsons, Nelson Muntz. Because there are episodes that he learns <laughs> the errors of his way. So he's at number five. He's the least awful of the, my group. Uh, my number five, I hope he this. With uh, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman from Full Metal Jacket mm-hmm. and Judith Fessbegler from Saving Silverman. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's a movie I haven't heard in a while. Uh, number five for you, Brian? <clears throat> uh, number five for me, friend of the show, Neil McDonough as Robert Quarles and Justified. Okay. Uh, oh, they were just going to say Neil McDonough. I was like, he's a peach. Yes, but he does play bullies well. He does. He does. He is very I good. asked him that at the Cincinnati Comic Expo, October 18th through the 20th. Get your tickets now at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. There you go. Uh, number five? I had uh, Butch from The Little Rascals. <laughs> Butch. Wait, Class- <laughs> classic bully from the 1940s. Way to get that 100 to 110 year old demographic we've been looking That's for. Right. <laughs> good job. Come on, Moim. <laughs> He had uh, to get Alabama back somehow. That's right. That's right. Uh, number four, Blake? I hope he's number four. It's mm-hmm. that uh, good-looking, blonde, preppy dude that everybody fucking hates. That was uh, Stan Gable from Revenge of the Nerds. Nerds! And, of course, Johnny Lawrence, William Zafka's uh, karate kid. Yep. What about uh, uh, William Zapka from uh, back, in, back to School? Yeah, I triple Hobie did. <laughs> That's what I was going to say next. <laughs> Didn't William Zabka play like a, a bunch of different bullies? He wasn't a bully in uh, uh, European Vacation. No, oh. he was. He was the go-to bully of the eighties. He was yeah, the go-to bully. Although there, there could be an argument made that you know he was the actual hero of Karate Kid. And, yes, and uh, Daniel Larusso is the bully. Correct. Well, he's the bully in uh, in Cobra, Cobra Kai. That's right, Cobra Kai. That's right. Uh, Brian, number four. Uh, number four for me, uh, the paper boy from Better Off Dead. <laughs> oh, I want my two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> yeah, but he delivers a product for two dollars. I mean, come but on, he pay the boy. You I pay to the get. boy. I really thought and, you meant the paper boy from the Nintendo game. <laughs> like that, game. Yeah. he was kind of a bully. He, he did have that great switch uh, comb. Yeah, yeah he did. Uh, number four, Jim. Number four, uh, I'm going to hope you this, two people on the same show. Ooh. I'll do Perry Cox and Jordan Sullivan uh-huh. from Scrubs. Perry. Okay. <laughs> I never really ever viewed him as a bully, but he really is. He really is. Well, I mean. <laughs> I mean, I just never, like. 87 moved. different nicknames for. The... <laughs> but I laughed at that. Like, I didn't ever. That's like, why he's one of my favorite bullies. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this this I mean, doesn't say favorite or not or like worse. This this and it's your list. I get yeah. that. I'm just saying I never viewed him as a bully because I find everything that he does hilarious. <laughs> and every nickname was actually a show of affection. Maybe he's just misunderstood. <laughs> uh, my number four is Lucy Van Pelt from the Peanuts. Sorry, someone's <laughs> eating Doritos on microphone. Uh, Lucy yep. was not always the nicest person. No, she was not. She was a bully. But she gave good advice. She did. For, for five, five cents. cents. Five cents. Uh, Jeff? Uh, let's see. Well, I'm going uh, to the, the Simpsons, which you have mentioned earlier. I'm going with Jimbo, Dolph, and mm-hmm. Kearney. Give me that one. I would say they're bigger bullies than Nelson. Yeah, Nelson was kind of the friend bully. These are just the bullies. Yeah. And Kearney's son was even a bully. <laughs> they were in class together. <laughs> Uh, number four, Jeff Scamp. Uh, mine's also from Peanuts, but it wasn't Lucy because I I feel that Lucy doesn't realize she's being the bully, and like in the Christmas one, she was actually kind of nice to him. Mm-hmm. But there was that one Peanut character that when he got the the invitation to the Halloween party, she's like, there were two lists, Charlie Brown, one of people to invite and one <laughs> not to invite. You must have been put on the wrong list. Whatever that was. I, Violet. I couldn't Violet. remember if it was Violet or Frida who <laughs> it was said Violet, that. Violet, I think. <laughs> yep. 
but she, but I yeah. feel she's a worse bully. Okay, <laughs> I like that one. Number three, uh, the, whoever Keeper Sutherland was in the Lost Boys, Ace, Ace, closer to the mic, Jeff. Oh, uh, whoever Kiefer Sutherland was in the Lost Boys. Okay. Well, Ace wasn't the oh, Lost wait, Boys. No, Ace is <laughs> a- Ace Merrill was the, was the Stand By Me. Stand, stand By, by me. me. You're right. I was thinking the same don't, thing. Don't throw oh, away my number on. two. <laughs> <laughs> Sun Vampire number one. <laughs> uh, number three for you, Jeff? Uh, number three for me, I have uh, Jack, Augie, and the Banducci twins. They were the bullies in the movie Airborne. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you know Devil's Backbone connects Delhi to Cincinnati? Uh, and Northern Kentucky. No, they, Northern they Kentucky. never even go in Delhi on the Devil's That's Backbone. That's true. Uh, my number and th- Augie played by Jack, Jack Black. Black. My number three is, uh, I thought of this one because my youngest son has never seen the cartoon uh, but he saw the clip, uh, I don't know, on Fortnite or whatever, and he keeps singing it through the house of bird, 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 bird's the word, yeah. Peter Griffin. So He is the biggest bully to Meg. Yes. <laughs> My youngest son literally does the dance and everything. Every like I can see. Every couple hours. Hey, Mom. Bird, did you hear the word? <laughs> bird, oh God, bird. I can see your son doing that. And my wife is like, please stop. Please stop. <laughs> and so then I start doing it with him. So, yeah. So, bird, I should, bird, 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 bird. Yep. I should push the buttons. Yep. Bird, bird, bird. Uh, number three. Number three, I hobied this. Mm-hmm. I have Mongo <laughs> and Moody. Who's Moody? He is the, pretty much when you said, uh, Bullies. Bullies. It's the first one I thought of. It's Matt Dillon's character from the movie My Bodyguard. Hmm. <laughs> he was a bully. Pretty much anything that Matt Dillon does is a bully. Yeah. yeah. Yes. But this is the bully who Chris Makepeace's character had to hire uh, Adam Baldwin Adam Baldwin to protect him and bodyguard him from. Gotcha. Yeah. Are you talking about Mongo, who's but a pawn in life, in the game of life? Mongo, just a pawn in this game of life, yes. Okay. Uh, he turned out to be a good guy later. But he's still bully. I guess he, he did trap the entire town behind a piano. <laughs> well, that was impressive. <laughs> number three, Brian. Uh, number three for me is the O'Doyle family. <laughs> oh. O'Doyle's rule. O'Doyle rule. Uh, no, Doyle, have, O'Doyle. I have a feeling your entire family is going down. But for now, I've got to study. <laughs> number three, Blake. Oh. Yeah, number three. Uh, you know, being a bully in the 50s was pretty popular, I guess. But, you know, Back to the Future, Biff. Oh, okay. Oh, I forgot about yeah. Biff. And he had the perfect haircut for it. He too. did. <laughs> and the best cronies that, you know, stereotyped, you know, Bazooka Joe bullies back <laughs> yes. in the 50s. Yes. You know. you know, I'll even throw Biff's grandson in Back to the Future 2 yeah. on that. <laughs> Is that Buff? I can't remember. Probably. I think it might be right. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two. It's, uh, number two. This could be controversial, but I, you know, I, I thought about this. And I'm like, you know, then we call him the, you know, kind of like the hero in all the Warner Brothers cartoons. But you know, Bugs Bunny was pretty mean. To I agree. Bugs That's Bunny a is a bully. Yep. Bugs Bunny was a bully. I don't yep. care what anybody says. What he does to Florida is amazing. <laughs> 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 but he took that wrong turn in Albuquerque. Yeah. He did. Uh, number two, Brian. Uh, number two for me, uh, Tony Perkis. Ben Stiller in Heavyweights. Mm. Uh, Good one. Uh, number two. That's pretty much the same character he plays in Dodgeball. It right? White it's Goodman. identical. Yep. <laughs> um, I hope he's my number two. This actually has four. Whoa. Ooh. But they're kind of connected. Uh, you well, two of them. I have Statler and Waldorf. Mm. Yeah. They bullied the Muppets. Yep. And then this one, it's Cedric and Bob. Who's that? They're the gay, the two gay guys on friend or in Seinfeld who oh, steal the R yeah. war. <laughs> you will not wear the ribbon. You <laughs> bully Kramer to yeah. wear the ribbon when he doesn't want to wear a ribbon. That's great. Was I talking to you? <laughs> uh, my number two is uh, uh, screw you guys. I'm going home. Eric Cartman uh-huh. from South Park, who's a pretty big bully. I, he, he tried to exterminate the Jews. He did. <laughs> he got grounded for that, though. He did. He, so I think he learned a lesson. I don't think he did. If only they lesson. would have tried that with Hitler. <laughs> uh, number two? <laughs> they never ground Hitler. If Hitler would have just had a timeout as a child. Did, wait, did or you have Scott bought t- his fucking art? 
That's true. <laughs> did, did you have Scott Tennerman as a? No, I did not. His tears are tasty. <laughs> I have him as an honorable mention. <laughs> oh, your tears are taste so good. I made uh, you num- eat your parents. Uh, number two, I hope this one. Mm-hmm. I picked uh, Todd Packer <laughs> and Tammy Swanson. That's oh. a good one. Tammy two. Tammy two. <laughs> Here, are you a big Wool- William Hung fan? No. <laughs> Uh, number his two, license maybe? plate on his car. Well hung. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> when Ryan asked him when he's. I yeah. think William hung. Uh, Why have, do people keep uh, asking me that? Stand by me, bully. Kiefer Sutherland played. <laughs> number two. A- Ace Merrill. Ace. <laughs> hey, I Ace. think his name was Ace. No, it's Vampire Son number one. <laughs> and your number one? Uh, Francis from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> he I, took the bike the whole time. <laughs> I, that is an honorable mention. <laughs> I thought he hid it in the basement of the uh, Alamo. Alamo. <laughs> there is no basement in the Alamo. Uh, number one? Uh, number one, I have uh, Buddy Revel, the bully from 3 O'Clock High. Mm-hmm. Pretty much the quintessential bully movie. Uh, my number one is the biggest bully to his sibling uh, and to his parents. He's a fucking asshole. Caillou. Fuck him. God, that fucking piece of shit kid. Yeah, I don't know what this Caillou is, oh. but I'm glad I don't. So. Isn't it shows it's called Caillou? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's an awful show. Uh, number one. I'm going to hope you this because I have a couple people left on my list. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go in line of kind of what uh, Blake said. I'm going to go with Danny Burke. He is one of the tri-captains of the uh, Alpha, of uh, with the Alpha Betas. Uh, I will go Flash Thompson. Uh, he's honorable mention for me. Because he's played by Joe Man- Manganello. Yep. And my real number one is Clay Morrow. Oh, Sons of Anarchy. He is a bully. He's yeah. the Sam Crow bully. That's a good one. Uh, number one, Brian? Uh, number one for me, I hobied this. Uh, I've got Andrew Clark and John Bender <laughs> from I Breakfast Club. Did have John Bender as an honorable mention. I'm impressed that nobody. we haven't had any duplicates here. Uh, number one, Blake? Uh, my number one, Mr. Potter. <laughs> for Mr. Wonderful Life. <laughs> Think about it. He's rich. Oh, yeah. He's influential. He's a yep. And like he's in it. a wheelchair, so you can't really punch him. Yep. I mean, for, think about it. For for there, I thought you said someone Mr. in a wheelchair. Cotter, and I went, he's not a bully. <laughs> I thought that's it. <laughs> Mr. Cotter? No. <laughs> Mr. Cotter. Uh, we'll, no. Do some, uh, we'll do some uh, listener ones, and then we'll do go back to honorable mentions. Jen, your significant other, who's a floppy winner. Dina Fox Multi. from Superstore. That's a good one. Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie. Oh, Nellie was, Nelly a, was a big bully. Jim Halpert from The Office. Jim Whoa. wasn't a bully. He bullied he was, Dwight. He was a prankster. <laughs> Regina Pranksters and bullies are different. He broke up an engaged couple. Regina George from Mean Girls. And Cordelia Chase from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Shocking that she had a yeah, Buffy. Yeah, Jen one. had a Buffy reference. Uh, Steve from Everything I Learned from Movies. Everything I Learned. From movies. Had Feed Rutha. I don't know who that is. From Dune, 1984. Uh, James Potter from Harry Potter and Deathly Hallows. Crease from Car- Karate oh, Kid. Yeah. John Crease. Ogre from Revenge of the Nerds. And Buddy Revel from Three O'Clock High. Uh, we also had uh, Randall from uh, Randy at Randall Holt. Sorry. RJ. Randall R- at RJ Holt 666. He's not evil. He's just my brother handled that way. He had Lucy Van Pelt, Charlie Brown. Biff from Back to the Future. Cartman, did he copy mine? Or Nelson. more likely, did you copy his? This was only two hours ago. I had mine done earlier today. <laughs> Nelson <Prove> Muntz, <laughs> Nelson, Nelson Muntz, and Francis Books Buxton from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Uh, the only other honorable mention I had was oh no, uh, Roger Klotz from Doug, the guy with the leather jacket and the. The cartoon Doug. I hate yeah, that, that show. Yeah, that would require watching Doug. It was, to know who I that remember because we saw a movie or, of it. Or Caillou. I saw the, <laughs> yeah. the theatrical movie. Uh, so there you go. Honorable mention. I had Scott Farkas. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, every other one's been mentioned. So, yeah. Johnny oh, Lawrence sorry. was my honorable mention. Uh, Jacobo. Uh, by Tweets oh. by Jacobo. Oh, yes. He had uh, Biff. Yep. DD. Yep. Uh, Roger Klotz from Doug. Hey! <laughs> the Doyle brothers. There we go. And Eric Cartman. Uh, Doctor number one. Wait. Doctor number one. I really hope uh, Jacobo's fridge has uh, has rebooted. Unfrozen. 
the Hobie guys, <laughs> so he can catch all of our latest Episodes. podcasts. Uh, Doctor Number One said, "I only have Blake and Jason because the way they treat Brian." <laughs> I wasn't going to bring this up, but uh, they're not fictional. That's the problem with that. So choice in the in the podcast world, they are. Uh, I had uh, some. I got a message from somebody from one of our listeners. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she messaged me and she's like. Uh, uh, what'd she call me? Uh, hey, Bearded Dragon, give me a hippie name. And I forgot all about that we gave each other hippie names. And I'm like, this is weird, but okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> you were the Bearded Dragon in your hippie. I forgot what my hippie name was. I, even, I don't remember. We have to go back to that. What mine was. Uh, bad idea of the week. Bad idea of the week is we're trying to continue without doing a uh, Mad Lib. Clue Mad Lib. Okay, hurry us up. Let's go. I think we should go on for another half hour. Please don't. <laughs> uh, right. Bad idea was 812. Jump on top of a subway train. That's, oh, that's, a, that's number 10. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. We'll start with the very first one. Clue. Clue. Clue the very Clue first Mad Lib. Mad Lib. Okay, go ahead. Blake, I need an adjective. Strong. Jeff, I need a noun. Mister, is that a noun? That might not be a noun. That sounds like a title. Man. Yeah. You could do man. Uh, well, I guess uh, that mister over there. Mister Mister works for e. me. Okay. okay. Oh, professor would have been better. Professor <laughs> works for me. <laughs> it's uh, a clue, Madeline. Jason, give me a country. Oh, you skipped me. Jeff, sorry. <laughs> I, I said Jeff, and I just. Oh, okay. Jeff, give me a country. Kazakhstan. Borat's from there. Come on. Very nice. Uh, Jason, give me a number. My wife. High five. 112. Jim, give me an adjective. Dirty. Blake, give me a plural noun. Misters. <laughs> Jeff, give Wouldn't me a color. Would that be colors. Messers? <laughs> Scarlet. <laughs> Jeff, give me an adjective. Sweaty. Jason, give me a noun. Mm, turtle. Jim, give me a noun. Mm, bookshelf. Blake, give me an adjective. Red. Jeff, give me a noun. Plum. <laughs> Jeff, give me an exclamation. Yowzy. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say yowza, but I changed it from ya uh, at the end to e. Uh, Jason, give me a plural noun. Penguins. <laughs> Jim, give me an occupation. Penguin. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> priest. All right, Blake. Uh, give me a noun. Penguin trainer. <laughs> All right. This is called It Was a Setup. The design of the Clue game board is instantly strong. Here it's... are some of the this classic game's most professor worthy features. The game board is the game board is designed to look like the floor plan of a nineteen twenty six mansion in merry old Kazakhstan. <laughs> it has two hundred and twelve main rooms <laughs> and two dirty passageways. <laughs> Playing pieces shaped like tiny misters represent the six different murder suspects. Mr. Green is green. Colonel Mustard is scarlet, for example. (laughs) Potential murder weapons are represented by sweaty props, usually made of turtle. In the original version of the game, the rope was made of real bookshelf. Some red versions of the game even have mini weapons made of gold and plum and (laughs) yowzy. I don't. Players use a deck of penguins and <laughs> and a priest's notepad to track clues to help them crack the penguin trainer. <laughs> well, they all can't be winners, kid. Yowzy! <laughs> uh, Jason, I'm so sorry that we did this and we set your night back. I'm so sorry we did. But this. there were 212 rooms in that game of Clue. <laughs> two, only two dirty passageways. <laughs> In a room with a house that big, only two dirty passageways. They must be really long. They yeah, have it's like to be. Scooby Doo, where they go through one. <laughs> uh, Jeff, thanks for showing up. We appreciate. You're welcome. It. 
Scab Jeff, thanks for showing up. You are also welcome. Uh, tie us for the show. I don't have much. What you got? More peeps. I got... Tell me what my peep tastes like. <laughs> I got algorithms are killing your children. <laughs> and like two that. dirty passageways. I have how does my peep taste? Our peeps are backing up. I'm not on staff. That's it. I have sea donkey. <laughs> uh, is is there a pit of despair? All Vince's idea. No sausage. No eggs. And merry old Kazakhstan. <laughs> Jim? I don't have any. I didn't write All that right. down. Uh, let's see. I wrote down sea donkey. Uh, that's not what we do here, Blake. <laughs> Uh, that's where the blood comes in, and Hitler was never grounded. So, sea donkey, it is. <laughs> Mary old Kazakhstan. We are a history podcast, not a geography podcast. That's fine. I can do that one. Uh, no, you can't spell it. No, I can't. Yeah, you no, know he can't. Uh, so, algorithms are killing your children. It is. I do like that one. I can go with algorithms. Are killing. Okay, we're doing that one. Uh, I'm like you can spell algorithms. <laughs> I A-L- can't. A L G O T H I A M S. I don't think that's right, but <laughs> that reminds me of the adult that's spelling bee in letter algorithmus. <laughs> that was pretty <laughs> funny. Algorithmus. Yes. No. That, come on. Roger says I still. Goodbye. Bye. Than Walking Dead to Talking Heads, from comic books to TV sets. There's a history. Not so bad. There's a the history. It's the history of bad, so bad. The history of bad, it's bad. The history of bad ideas. Podcast. You've been listening to Hobie.